Okay, so for the astute amongst you, yes, I'm using a different lens kit. Um, and yes, I'm out of breath. <laughs> um, I changed from my 80 millimeter lens kit over to my 25 millimeter lens kit, just to see. I was doing some photography yesterday, redoing the uh, profile photo for the website. <sighs> yeah, it, it's not necessarily zoomed in, it's actually just, yeah. Hey squid, um, <laughs> still out of breath. I, I like to work out right up until like I was pushing it there. Um, just getting some squats in, uh, weighted squats. I am West Coast. I am I am technically the lost. I'm the Pacific time zone. Um, how was your stream, squid? Um, yeah. So yeah, technically zoomed in, but yeah, just a different, uh, oh, different lens entirely. Um, normally I run an 80 millimeter lens. Um, this is a 25 millimeter lens, um, different f-stop. Um, I think we're at 2.8 f-stop as opposed to a 4.0 on um, my 80. So my 80 doesn't go, uh, goes uh, low. Um, but yeah, it's actually, it's a clearer lens kit. Um, you can, it's definitely, uh, yeah, more realistic. <sighs> um, so yeah, I'm not sure if I like it yet or not. So to get, to get the same framing, I have to be, I'm beyond, I'm beyond arm's reach to the keyboard. I'm not sure I like this lens kit yet. Um, for, for videography, at least. Hey, Buddhist. I, I pr probably will end up going back to the 80 millimeter. Um, but I thought I'd give it a try. Yeah, I don't, I don't like being this close in. 
Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a little it's a little uh, much. Uh, this is the distance I'd prefer it to be the framing. Um, hmm. Me, uh, let's see. I need to get. Let me try something. Bear with me. Get a little more distance out of it. We'll see if that holds. It may sink. Yeah, I can see. I can see the bottom. All right. That's a little better. That's a little better. Uh, I had to rearrange some stuff there to make that work. <laughs> oh, weather. Yeah, whatever this is, no. Oh. Hmm. I wonder if I could get that a few more inches off. I just take the t-shirt off already and move the camera some more. Um, I wonder if I could get that back a few more inches. Hmm. We'll see. Um, I may fiddle with it some more. But, yeah. For the moment, it can stand. Uh, how was everybody's week, man? How was your Wednesday? Since I, seeing as I took yesterday off. Um, I got a, I got a little something, a little s stuff done. Um, I changed the, uh, prof I changed the profile photo for the website. I, 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 I laughed. I, I was on voice chat. Um, happy birthday redacted. Happy, happy womb eviction day. I, I giggled the fuck. Uh, like I, I standard photographer thing, right? I took like dozens of photos just like. You know, looking around, different angles, smiling, not smiling, fucking, you know. And <laughs> this sort of incredulous side glance was in one of the shots I took. And the way it lined up with, like, the the, the wording on the website, I, I legitimately started laughing my ass off. I'm like, it looks like I doubt my own brand. Um... I, I would I, I, I adore this. I, I'm keeping it for a while. I, I adore this. Uh, it's just like mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I love that. I love that photo. It's speculative. Uh, yeah, it looks it looks like I have doubts. And I, I Angie pointed out that like that is sort of your brand. Is that you have doubts about basically everything. Um, so I'm like, well, you know, it works for me. Oh, well, I am a bit older. Caboose, the last photo was fucking taken years ago, and I looked worse for wear. Um, thank you, testosterone. Thank you, fucking, a few other things I won't get into, but, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're gonna keep it. I mean, you know, I'm... I'm closing in fast on fucking 40, so might as well look a little bit older. Uh, you're saying it makes me look older than I actually am. I don't see it, but you know. Okay. You look the same, but different. Yeah, there's there's the actual young in Caboose. Uh, Katie, I'm... I'm basically 39 yeah i'm 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 gonna be 40 here not that far away for all intents and purposes um different lighting different lens kit different distance and some sleep 
Um, uh, thank you, Katie. Uh, that, that That's always a boost to my ego when the fucking young ones think I'm still in my 20s. Um, but, yeah. No, I'm almost 40. Uh, yeah, it's it's also... It's a 28mm lens kit. It's a... Um, a static uh, 28 millimeter lens kit is a uh, 25 millimeter lens kit that is um, exceptional in quality as well. Um, so, yeah. Um, it's usually what I take all my photos in. I, I, uh, um, yeah, I, I, I like to shoot in a in a 25 mil uh lens um yeah yep squid uh katie be, uh, uh here here's the secret i'm not i'm not positive at all i'm a i'm an eternal pessimist i don't think any of this is going to work out i don't i think i if you've ever seen the movie elysium where the rich fuck off to a space station with high-end technologies and a basic, a basically achieve immortality while the rest of the peasants are left on a ruined earth. I think that's it. I think that that's where humanity is headed. Um, I think if, if you've seen The Expanse, that. I think we'll, like, a bunch of fucking militarized corporate uh, corporations are going to fucking land on Mars. Um, I think there's going to be a bunch of corporations that start mining the asteroid belt. There's going to be people born in the asteroid belt to miners, and they are going to be third-class citizens compared to the second-class citizens that Martians will end up being compared to the Terrans. Um, and I think there will be infighting and battles between them all. Um, and I think humanity's um, next century or three worth of uh, future history um, will be wrought with corporate infighting over uh, over solar resources in the system. Yeah, I think there will be growing divides between planetary elements such as the Martians and the Terrans. I think that the people born on the asteroid belt to, uh, to mining conglomerates will be essentially indentured servants. And that's that's what I see the future of humanity to be. I'm I'm an I'm an anarchist. So fundamentally, philosophically speaking, I'm an idealist. I would like to make this happen. Do I think it'll happen? No. Human beings are stupid as fuck. The capitalist, the capital class will win. Yeah, Amherst. Yeah, straight up the expanse without you know the alien shit. Without wormholes and fucking proto molecules and shit. Um, yeah, I think the capitalists will win. I think I, I think the fucking capitalist cl uh, the capitalist class is going to fucking they've already squirreled away um, what they need. They they've already won. Um, barring any major upheavals, yeah. Go Lucas. It's the same camera. It's just a different lens kit. So what keeps me going? I, don't know. I, I I legitimately can't tell you. Um, although I don't like, give me one second. There we go. Uh, yeah, there we go. I prefer that. Um, yeah, it's it's. <clears throat> Spite. Spite. Spite's a good reason. Sheer spite. Um, still got some experimenting to do on this body. I mean, it's a shit show as it is, so I might as well play around with it. Um, um, you know, yeah. And sheer curiosity. Just sheer curiosity. To see what new fucked up thing happens, if there's any cool, exciting developments along the way. Um, yeah, sheer curiosity and spite basically keep me going. Um, but, yeah, if I can <clears throat> spread my ideology a little bit along the way. And uh, here you go, I'll give you a fucking, I'll give you a freebie if you're running bingo. Um, I'm a torchbearer. 
I'm just trying to make sure that the anarchistic ideals don't die. I'm just making sure that I spread the seed to the wind and that even if we do end up in an expanse scenario, that maybe, just maybe, sometime in the future, there will be an anarchist space station, an anarchist planet, asteroid, something. Um... Uh, 2013, um, I've broken, um, my C6 already, so I've, you know, I've conducted that experiment. Um, but yeah, that's, that's sort of, you know, well, some of the stuff that keeps me going. To be perfectly honest, it's sort of miserable being me, despite everything. Um, <laughs> Anarchist Astromorph Society. Um, oh, fucking ain't redacted. Oh. Say, the framing, the framing redacted, you can't see them. So it doesn't really matter. Um... Um, I think that's a minute. The points are only for a minute. <laughs> One of those fucking idiot bot fucking, um, things keeps following the probably radical bot account, which is just fucking hilarious. <sighs> Let me do this. Oh. Um. I watch all family fuck comrades. Um I finished finally um Sense8 last night. I had seen up to the cancellation. And but after like a two years or something like that, they did like a movie end to the series and I'd never watched it. Um, even though I, I firmly believed that the end episode of sense eight was finally the beginning of something good. I was like, this is where this show gets fucking badass now. Um, S E N S E eight, the numeral eight. Joe, watch the ending. Um, watch the two and a half hour ending episode. It is... I, I was satisfied. I was satisfied. They wrapped it. They, they legitimately wrapped it. And I want to know how much they spent on that episode. Dude, that fucking episode had to cost a pretty penny. Um, that was... Dude... They rented the Eiffel Tower for fuck's sake. Um, was the final episode you watched two and a half hours long, Joe? Because if it wasn't two and a half hours in length, then you didn't watch the final episode. If, you, if it was, then you watched the final episode. Did you see them rent out the Eiffel Tower for an episode? Because they did that. Like, they spent some cash on that fucking episode. I was, I was impressed. Um, but no, I was, I was actually happy. I was like this, this is, there was one critique. There was one thing I would have changed. Um, but beyond that, I was satisfied. I was like, that's, that's an ending I can, I can go forward with. It's rare you get that kind of thing out of, especially a canceled show. Um, I have not watched Q Force. I plan on watching Q Force. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I legitimately, I, I was, I was pleased. I was pleased. Uh, I, I was, you know, they did the things they needed to do, and the end fucking, like the end sequence. Holy shit! Like the Wachowski sisters did not. Uh, <laughs> I was, I, yeah. The whole fucking show is an allegory for like uh, non uh, non normative sexualities and in like identities and relationship styles. Like the whole fucking thing is an is an allegory for that. But the the end um the end sequence is. It, I, yeah, I don't want. I don't want to fucking spoil anything. I'll tell you the very end shot. The 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 entire series closes on a single shot. It is a rainbow. It is a thick fucking rainbow dildo strap on with body fluids on it. Fade to black for our fans. I was like, we're ending on this, huh? the it was it was uh, that end sequence was uh i was like we're doing this we're fucking doing this huh like they were going out on a bang it's like god damn um but no they tied up all the storylines they needed to tie up even characters i didn't think they'd revisit um they they tied it up actually really well i i was impressed um yeah it was badass, it was emotional, it was funny, it was satisfying. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a good that was a good fucking watch. I enjoyed the hell out of that. Um sl- the show was slow to start. That show was slow to start and that show is hell to edit. I I I think um I I just sit there and think about h- how much of a nightmare that show had to be to edit like i i just anybody who understands the principle of the show like there's there's eight there's eight fucking people who are psychically tied to each other and can like basically experience everything everybody else is experiencing you can join people for stuff um so the like you can like one second it's it's a person who doesn't know how to fight but one of the other people in their cluster knows really how to fight badass and can sort of swap places with them and take over for them and both of them can be there in that moment and the editing the 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 scripting and editing for that show had to be such a fucking nightmare to do I, i just some of those fight sequences some of those action sequences the camera cuts and the fucking change of people and the honestly the editors for that show have my like eternal admiration that had to be a nightmare to edit that show no wither it's live action yeah it's It was, the, dude, the, it was an impressive show. It took a while to fucking get that ball rolling. But once they did, honestly, it's a badass fucking premise. Yeah. Imagine sharing all of, like, experience, feelings, physical feelings, emotional feelings, knowledge, capability, physical capability, like muscle memory with seven other people spread out over the planet. What might you have access to when you combine those resources of those eight people? It's it's a fascinating concept, and in like they actually executed well. Like it, that could be very difficult. You could fail in a lot of avenues trying to film something like that, and they did it. Like credit where credits due, they fucking did it. Um, yeah. And it is, it is badass. Like it's, it's legitimately badass. The only, I have one criticism of the end, the end, uh, the end episode. And I was just like, "Mm." 
But other than that, yeah, fucking um, whispers. For those of you, for those of you who have seen the ending, whispers. I didn't get to see him get got. That was that was my criticism. I want to see that motherfucker. Yeah, I didn't get to see it. So that that was, was like, mm, you know what? As much of a fucking problem as this dude has been this entire fucking series. <clears throat> I kind of want to be up up close and personal for that one. But hey. Um yeah, I I it was a good watch. It was a good watch and if you fucking need some and I mean yeah, it's hyper political. Like it's 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 hyper political. Um it, it's it's identity politics writ large. Let's just put it that way. Um, yeah, the Wachowski sisters did not fucking pull punches. Um, the storyline involving the, uh, Na- uh, is it Nomi or Naomi? I think it's Nomi, right? Like, I, I never quite figured out what that fucking girl's name was. Um, she, the, the trans girl, though, yeah, like, that was, like, it was a bit on the nose for that first season. Um, they didn't pull any fucking punches. They didn't try to, there wasn't much fucking, uh, allegory going on there. It was, it was straight up. Um, but yeah, I, uh, honestly, it's a really good show. Um, and I'm kind of glad that it did get canceled. Um, they were dragging. They were dragging. Um, and the fact that they sort of had like a deadline now you have to wrap this show you have two and a half hours finish it i think was a good thing for that story i i I legitimately do think that that was probably good for the story that they 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 got restricted um oh yeah oh yeah i know Uh, you know yeah it was it was all them um, and they did good. Um, I'm also not interested in the fourth matrix. I haven't watched the trailer. I don't give a shit. I didn't give a shit about the third one. I didn't give a shit about the second one. As far as I'm concerned, the matrix ended at the first one. I, 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 I tapped on the, the matrix a while ago. Look, I know what I know. The, I know the parable of cyber Jesus. You don't, I don't, I don't need, I don't need the resurrection story, right? Like, pass, hard pass. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I haven't even watched the trailer. I'm not, probably not gonna. Um, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. I didn't watch the fucking second Star Wars I didn't watch the third one. I haven't watched any of the fucking new ones. I tapped when I saw episode one. I was like, you know what? I'm happy with the original story. I don't need more of this. Um, Wither, Wither, the entire thing is, it's Jesus. They can, look, the Wachowski sisters can spin it as a story of trans liberation all they want. It's the monomyth. It's the story of Jesus. And there's no way around that. He literally sacrifices himself for the good of humanity, for fuck's sake. It's... It's Jesus. He's cyber Jesus. Neo is cyber Jesus. That's, That's the story. And the first one was fucking good. I, whether again, I don't need Star Wars in my life. I don't. Um, just like the fucking, um, you know what? Fuck it. Just like um, uh, the um, the boys or whatever the fuck, um, Homelander shit on um, on uh, Amazon. I watched the first season. I was happy. I was like, okay, that story's done. And I know, like, I know there's a second season. I know people enjoy it. But that story concluded for me. And, um... 
yeah, I, 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 I'm okay. I, old school anime taught me a really good lesson. 26 episodes. 26 episodes. If you can't tell your story in 26 episodes, there's something going wrong, right? Like, if you can't tell your story in a limited amount of time, if you have to have, I'm sorry, if you have to have eight books for your fucking story and even then the story is still kind of got holes and gaps and shit, I don't think you're a good author. I, I, I... Stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. What happened to the end? I, I, I don't, I'm sorry. Like, I can't, I've eight seasons of 22 episodes and shit like that. It's like, this is an artificially elongated thing. This isn't a proper story format. This isn't proper stru uh, uh, story structure. I just... I can't. I, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. So, um, One Piece is near a thousand episodes and they, um, they're all pretty well knit. Yeah, no, 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 they're not. I'm sorry. If somebody fucking diagrammed that shit, there's no way they are. A thousand episodes. There's no way you can keep that on rails. How many authors are involved in that? Um, they are. Guys, they are. Shorter animes are better than longer animes. Shorter stories are better than longer stories. There's very few authors who can write a long story properly. It's, it's, it's extraordinarily difficult to do that. And to do it well puts you in the top tier of authors, basically. Right? Like, you get mentioned in the same breath as, like, Asimov. Right? And Herbert. That that's, that's, you, it's difficult to do that. Um, I, uh, I used to have a scale. If an anime hasn't gone full story mode by the fourth episode, then it's just not worth it. Squid, that's, that's fair. Yeah, I, I, Scott, I'm, I'm 100% okay with that. Like, that's. If you hit a point in the story that you're like, no, I'm comfortable stopping. Like, this feels good to me to stop here. This feels like this could be an end to this se this story. I don't need any more. Yeah, I, I know about that one. The author of Berserk fucking dying. <laughs> fucking stupid ass long fucking bullshit that that was. Um... I recently watched Evangelion. Uh, hold on. Watch this. I recently watched Evangelion. Um, and it was so good. Yeah, you know what? Fucking Evangelion with all of their, like, 3.948252 episode 12 point bullshit underscore 97 uh, asterisk, uh, you know, to the fourth power shit can fuck right off. For their titles alone, that, se that series can fuck off. Yeah. Just like Kingdom Hearts. Uh, well, seeing as we're in just chatting, Willem, or Will from the K, um, yeah. Yeah, I am, actually. Um... creator of that series was going through union therapy or something at the time and he turned that experience into that show yeah i've i've, I've heard of that um and yeah evangelion was just too religious for me yeah i've heard that fucking comparison too um or that that's apparently what it is it's super religious um the publishers force so much pressure on the writers to pump out 50 episodes story arcs every year and it's killing the art just in my opinion it's good i mean yeah they want it's about the money we all know that Fucking once the fans are hooked, it's like, um, I know this is like, a uh, 
it's literally in just chatting. The category is listed as just chatting. So I'm sorry if Twitch has not refreshed some bullshit for you, but if I need to take a screenshot and show you the category myself, then I will, I guess, but I shouldn't have to prove shit to you at this point. I'm looking at the category right now in just chatting. So deal with it. Um, or you could argue and totally ingratiate yourself into the conversation for sure. Um, do you think that condensing the uh, literature and distributing the IRL would be useful to spread awareness? Like we try to create a network locally and applying principles, which, 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 which literature chapo at uh, 990 episodes, Jesus Christ. Um, What makes me radical or definitionally? Definitionally, Oxford Encyclopedia of, uh, uh, of English, uh, lexico.com uh, if you want to access it online. Secondary definition of radical, fundamental, or systemic change, especially that within a political system. Look around. Do you think that this shit is working? Do you think that it needs overhauling? There you go. You're a radical already. Um... Little loud Ludo. Uh, even Hassan starts his politics show with just talking about whatever as a warm up. I know, right? Anarchist literature. I mean, you could. Um, we have a library on the Discord server. No, not everybody gets a library card. Um, but yeah, um, just due to reasons. It's OPSEC. It's OPSEC. It's not that, like, you know, oh, we have a hierarchy. It's just, it's operational security stuff. Um, but in the anarchist library, um, dot org fucking does a really good job of distributing it. Um, but you could theoretically print out a shit ton of uh, brochures, pamphlets, flyers, um, and distribute them locally. I think that that's less of an advantageous uh, mechanism for education, though. I think anarchists, my community can tell you, I preach this on a fucking regular basis. 50% of what anarchists do is education. I think most of it needs to be done face-to-face. -face. I think it needs to be done conversationally. Uh, rhetorical device is the number one uh, tool for an anarchist. Um, it always has been. Um, so I think that it starts with the conversation. So I, maybe a pamphlet, maybe a book, maybe a brochure might pique some people's interest, but I think most people want to be able to walk up to somebody face to face and have a conversation. Um, so. I love the just chatting people. The just chatting people are worse than the politics people. You ever notice that? Just another brother. You were here fucking, you're 98 messages deep at this point. Like fucking. You get all your trolls in, in chat. Yeah, they, they are worse than the politics people by far. Like it, it's, it's astounding how bad the just chatting people are. Um, and yeah, that just another brother fucking, um, fucking is hilarious um just chatting has a bad stigma yeah that's what i'm noticing um anytime we come over from politics into just chatting because we want to talk we want to adhere to tos and fucking hold the categories um and be like hey we're just talking about movies and fucking books and anime and shit right now we get a bunch of fucking idiots honestly it's it's astounding um just another brother. What makes me radical? The fact that I've been a fucking anarchist basically my entire life. The fact that I grew up listening to things like Gu the Guthrie's. The fact that by age 14, I was literally outside of the system working extra, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, extra economically. Uh, the fact that I've been involved in organizing and activism and direct action since my fucking teen years. The fact that I helped organize the Las Vegas Occupy movement in my, like, early basically 20s early 20s the fact that i've been doing activist outreach and education in a level and a scale that like people like you probably don't even understand quite frankly the fact that i see fundamental problems on a global scale 
and that humanity needs a complete overhaul as far as our systems, our economics, our governance goes. The fact that our, our entire culture is built around a hierarchical model and that it, it incentivizes competition and aggressive behavior patterns such as yours. All of these sorts of things make me radical. Just another brother. If you're even still here. Though I probably would guess that you fucked off like the little coward you are. Um, yeah. Is Anarchy Merch not taxable? Depends how you sell it, I suppose. Um... Yeah, Kez, if you've got, um, nice skull dog. But anyway, back to what we were doing before a bunch of fucking morons came in. Um, His form of radical probably has just something to do with some form of radical consumption. I don't know. Fuck him. All I know is he had like 98 messages in this channel. And he's like, oh, yeah, parasocial attention. Please pay attention to me. Oh, how dare you? Here we go. Another one. You are the NPCs. Mm, yes. Um, somebody who unironically uses NPC for somebody else that they're interacting with. Definitely Gamergate fucking tech bro fucking uh white probably white replacement theory too while we're at it uh i'm guessing i'm i'm guessing probably three questions away from the jewish question <clears throat> you spew out with the powers that uh be to say you spew out what the powers that be to say you are the NPCs. Bit poor punctuation, Not doesn't understand commas, doesn't understand sentence structure, begins a sentence with and, fractured sentence. Uh, f Jesus Christ. Wow. It's hard to be right and hot. So are you saying I'm hot? Is that, wait. Is just another brother coming on to me? Oh, so that's what's going on. Oh. Boo boo. Do I make your pee pee feel funny? Yes, it happens so often. Let's see if I can get in frame for this. So, just a brother, just another brother fucking, um, yeah, I don't give a shit fucking what you give me credit for or not. You want to come on air and actually have the conversation? Come on. You got the cojones, right? You got the huevos? Have the conversation. I'm just an NPC with a, uh, with a dialogue tree, right? You should be able to speed run a conversation with me. Come on. Come on the air. Um, Chapo, I do, I, I am an essayist. I do have essays. Um, if you want to read something like I would write Chapo, um, exclamation tent poles, T E N T P O L E uh, O L E S, um, in chat, will get you an example of something that I write. Um, and you can sort of give that a read. That's probably what you're thinking of. And I already do stuff like that. Mm, sure you do. Sure you do. I bet you do talk a lot online. When's the last time you actually did something, brother? When's the last time you did some direction, a direct action? When's the last time you did some mutual aid? When's the last time you actually 
did something. Because I bet you do talk a lot online. <clears throat> oh, he follows Crooked Nose Media. Of course he does. Of course he does. Squid, thank you. I don't really have any thoughts on it, Chapo, to be perfectly honest. I stick to uh, anarchist theory for the most part. I've got all sorts of shit, but these days, the last probably five, seven years, it's strict theory. Um, the last capitalist critique I read would probably be anti-capitalism by I forget who, but um, yeah, like it's all, it's mostly theory. Ah, thank you, Kaz. Hmm. Oh, yeah, Puka, of course it is. Of course it is. He's a fu he's a fucking um he's a fucking uh uh <laughs> he's this right wing chud who literally does Wednesday night patrols and goes around and fucking like brigades fucking streamers with his like right wing chuds. Straight up. Yeah, that's fucking crooked nose media. Um, yeah, I've interacted with them. Trust me, I know. Um, I mean, Lucas, it works the same way mutualism works, but with organizing methodologies that are hierarchically aligned. I mean, do I need to explain mutualism? Is that what you're after? <coughs> Ugh, but... I mean, I am in just chatting. I kind of wanted to just, I, I kind of just wanted to talk about movies and TV and shit tonight. I mean, that's kind of why I put us in just chatting and that's kind of why I was talking about fucking Sensei before these morons fucking took us off the rails. Mm. Oh, yep. The fucking camera position is slipping. The mount is slipping. Ugh. Yeah, let's see if I can get that, keep that aligned. I'm a communism shithead. I'm trying to help to bed. Okay, so brother just had a stroke. I don't. Megas XLR. Um, Lucas, what I will get, do is get you some fucking literature. How about that? We'll compromise on that one, Lucas. And then if you want like another day, we can, we can discuss it. There you go. That's, that's relatively comprehensive. And if you want to like go beyond that, you could definitely start by rating Proudhon. Um, giant robot with a Mopar for a head fights aliens from the future. Um, Loud Ludo, it's not on my fucking command list. Uh, if you want my specs, you can go to my uh, website, kaisthinks.com, go to the about section and you can get, um, you can get my specs. Here, I'll help you out, Ludo. There you go. I'll give you a quick in. Um, although my computer isn't on there. Um, I never felt the need to put my computer on there. Um, if you want to know, um, it's a Ryzen 3900X. Um, fucking 64 gigs of RAM. Tw uh, 2080 Ti. Um... M.2, uh, an SSD, and a old school 
um, all stacked in. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I'm still waiting for you to come on the air, brother. I'm not talking to you in chat. I've invited you on the air, and you just refuse to engage. So, um, Ludo, here you go. There's a monitor here. There's a monitor here. There's a monitor here. There's the Procaster over there. Um, Mika, uh, Yellow Tech Mika, SM7B, um, and of course Stream Deck down here. Yes, the the mic arm for anybody who knows this sort of gear um, is definitely one of probably the pieces. Yeah, yeah, Yellow Tech Mika. Exclamation Discord! We'll put you on the air. Um, exclamation discord will put you on the air. Great. Not only is it a fucking genius, it's a fucking boomer too. Great. Um, <clears throat> yeah, if you got any other questions, Ludo, let me know. Um, I, I, IT consultant. Um, burned out. Um, but yeah, I've, I spent my life in IT. So this sort of stuff is just easy. Um, did you actually see the camera? No, the camera is out of view. Yeah. There you go. You can see the camera there, uh, Ludo. Let me get the uh, <laughs> fucking... <laughs> out of the way. Um, and, um, key lights up there. Uh, remote controllable. See if I can get you a, oops, drop that. See if I can get you a, a reasonable photo. Um, no, Ludo, I used, um, let me just try and, try and get you a fucking reverse shot here, you know. Alright, give me one sec, Ludo. I'll get you a fucking reverse shot, shot so you can understand the setup. stuff section. There we go. Uh. Mm. There you go, Ludo. So if you've got any questions beyond that, Ludo, just let me know. So you can see fucking OBS in front of me. Um, and so I pull chat from OBS in, directly in front of me, Discord and um, uh, Pretzel Rock. So music and Discord is up top as well as um, browser setup. Um, and then any sort of like research stuff I need to do or articles or that sort of stuff is on the left um, at present. Um, and then, yeah, like... Uh, right down there on the left-hand monitor, right below that, is the stream deck, and then keyboard and mouse. Um, so, there you go, Ludo. Yeah, the soundproof is fucking, <laughs> fucking mint, isn't it? It works. It actually works really well. Um, fucking moving blankets works fine. Um, yes. Um, the Rode uh, Procaster, I like. Um, I was a podcaster first. Um, and it fucking, I like it. 
Yeah, I really do. Uh, it ain't cheap, but yeah. I mean, none of this stuff is cheap. My mic arm is $400 for fuck's sake. God, you are boomer as shit, man. You think I'm going to give you a cell phone number? Yeah, I've, I haven't heard terrible things about the Go XLR, um, but I prefer my uh, my uh, Procaster. Um, four independent channels for XLR microphones, four independent channels for headphones, um, a USB-C um, dual inline, um, so I can plug it into the computer, but also have dual mixing, uh, bi-directional mixing. Um, standard 3.5 um, input, as well as Bluetooth, as well as your pads, Fucking thing. Uh, which are programmable and have multiple pages of pads for them. Um, inbuilt, you can you can travel with it too. Um, so like I can throw an SD card in it and just like multi-channel, uh, uh, multi-track record directly to the SD card on it. So like I could pick that up, put it in a fucking case, take all the gear somewhere else and fucking record without even a computer hooked up to it. Yeah. So it fits a whole bunch of use cases. Um, yeah, I, I like it. Um, I had an issue with my first one, but they, they replaced it. They just replaced it. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's a good piece of kit. Um, I like it, but you know the deal with fucking upgrading kit. You know, you get an SM7B, you get a fucking Procaster, and all of a sudden you got to get like Megami Golds and shit like that. Um, so like you know the the cable alone is a hundred dollar cable between my microphone and the fucking uh, mixing board. Yeah, Luda, I I I like it. Yeah, I, I, I can recommend it if that if you are in the market for something like that, I can recommend it. It's a good piece of kit. Um, the last thing I'm going to upgrade is probably the camera. One one, one day I'm going to fucking upgrade that to maybe a Sony like a seven or a seven three or something like that. Um, because the Canon that I'm working off of, while it does have facial autofocusing, um, it imprints the fucking uh, marker for HDMI out. So you have to turn off the autofocus um, or else it's just going to have a fucking box here the entire time, which is fucking stupid. Um, so it's all manual focus. Um, so you're just sort of locked in at distance. Um, but it's a it's my photography. It's one of my two photography cameras. Um, and I did do videography with it as well. And as long as you're not running an HDMI out of it, um, then you're good. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like if you're using it for actual, like making a movie or shooting shorts, it's a good fucking camera. Um, but yeah, as far as like what I'm using it for, it has its limitations. Yeah, there's, there's software for that sort of stuff, Ref, for sure. What is your fucking, what is your major malfunction, brother? What, what, what is wrong in your brain that you're so antisocial? Um, but yeah. So. Yeah, Ludo, it, if you've got any questions for anything, let me know. Um, I'm always happy to fucking help people in that regard. Too much ivermectin? <laughs> well, no, that's that's a good thing. <sighs> You're anti-so- No, you. Brilliant comeback. Exactly what I'd expect from somebody who follows fucking crooked nose. Um... I'm still waiting on you to get on the air. 
Still waiting. Oh, I'm sure it tastes horrible, Caboose. I'm sure it's been, it tastes horrible. Because I don't live in Portland, genius. Although, one of our members who is in chat with you right now, yeah, he's got more cred than you do with Portland protests, for sure. So, yeah, I won't call him out, though. Mm -hmm. Still waiting for you to get on the air. Uh, Kez, lowered sperm count, lowered motility, and uh, uh, and uh, affected morphology. So double tails and misshapen heads. Yeah, the five fucking ivermectin thing is kind of hilarious. Why would I give you a cell phone number to call into the show when there is literally a technology that can run through a browser on a cell phone to get you online? You fucking boomer. What are you, like 94? Like, seriously. Like, every single person on the face of the planet understands how to run Discord at this point. Like, literally my fucking, like, 60 fucking year old mom can do it. How fucking boomer do you have to be to not be able to figure out Discord at this point? Ah, thank you, Ludo. <clears throat> uh, Chapo, I don't, I didn't see what you asked. Hang on, let me pop your chat and actually look at it. Uh, what do you think? Um, oh, um, Chapo, you don't spend time on them. Um, if they're if they're antagonistic to the extent that like they're disrupting a food not bombs event or something like that, then maybe they need um, dealt with. Um, no discord for me. I don't have a, uh, a phone. You can do it on a computer. You can literally do it on any fucking device at this point. Um, yeah, uh, Chapo, if there, it depends what degree of antagonism we're talking about here. Um, whether you have to or not. Um, No, no, you can do it with an email. Um, not Alder. Um, certain servers require you to have the cell phone registration. It's a server security setting. Um, Basically, in our server settings, we can set our um, our um, fucking moderation levels. Um, there we go. Um, let's see. Privacy and safety. And... Oh, this user settings. I don't want that. Just disable that temporarily. Thank you. Um, so basically we have five, uh, settings for security on, uh, on, uh, uh, on discord server settings from unrestricted to verified email to registered on discord for longer than five minutes, being a member of the server longer than 10 minutes or have a verified phone on the discord account. Um, so you may have encountered a server that, um, requires you to have a, a verified phone number on the account. You're you're not an anarchist, given given your antagonism towards everybody. You're you're you have no idea how to engage in communalism or mu mutualism whatsoever. You your social the social fabric of any activity or action that you would be engaged with would be disrupted by your mere presence. You would destroy opsec for any action. I you, I would forbid I would forbid you fucking we would chase you out. Yeah, for sure. You would fuck shit up for it. It's 
about a philosophical challenging of power and authority mechanisms and figuring out the unjust me- uh, unjust power mechanisms in society and wherever they may lie and the dismantling replacement thereof and a collapsing down of hierarchical power structures into generally he- what's referred to as heterarchies or horizontal organizational structures. It's a modality of analysis. Yes, that you do have correct, but you're such an asshole about it that nobody would want to be an anarchist. See, this is the problem with people like you, is that you give anarchism a bad name. Nobody wants to actually engage with you because you're such a fucking prick. Dude, take a fucking hit of weed and relax. Rub one out if you have to. Do what you got to do to chill, man. But holy fuck. No, you're not peaceful. You're literally the verbal definition of aggressive. You are antagonistic by your very nature. And I'm sure that continues on into your in, in real life. I'm sure you are verbally antagonistic to the point of aggravating people to violence. So, yeah. Yeah, you can keep saying one or two word phrases all you want over and over again, but you have no you have no skills or rhetorician. You don't understand how to gauge engage in a dialectical exercise. You are literally disruptive to the fabric of any social event that you are engaged in at this point. Either just leave and come back another time when you fucking rubbed one out and you smoked a joint. Maybe you learned how to chill. Or just don't come back. <laughs> For the record, as a representative of the supposed fake category, a.k.a. ACAP, we do not claim him nor endorse his level of fuckery. Oh, but Scott just fucking <laughs> denounced him. <laughs> He's not one of ours. <clears throat> hey, Kazzy, thank you. Oh, non binary got one. Luda. <coughs> Option two. Yeah. Yeah, the bot, bot, bot's right there with it. No one needs you anywhere. Honestly, no one needs you. Um. Oh, jeez. Yeah, thanks again, guys. Um. <clears throat> I'm still waiting you to get on the air there. Still waiting you to for you to figure this shit out. It's a fucking link. All you gotta do is click it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't gaslight me. Um, all you got to do is click the Discord link and get on the air. Still waiting that conversation. My, NP- my NPC dialogue tree remains unfulfilled. Come on. I'm sure you're not just some keyboard warrior, right? You're a fucking proud anarchist. You're a proud socialist. You fucking get in the trenches with direct action. Just jumping on the air with some fucking NPC state fucking uh, uh, state uh, uh, co-opt co-intel pro type fucking talking head should be no challenge to you. You with those big old fucking huevos on you, right? Right? You definitely, you'll definitely fucking just. You'll you'll pwn me and fucking demolish me, right? Come on. Have the conversation. Engage in the dialectical exercise. Show me your credentials as a as a supposed anarchist. Have a conversation about theory. Let's talk about some of the direct direct action maybe somebody's somebody that you know, a friend of a friend has been involved in. Seeing as we've got somebody in chat who's fucking got real record from fucking Portland direct action. We can sort of compare some notes. Skulldog, I mean, if you fucking look at fucking YouTube clickbait titles, yeah, apparently they do. Come 
Come on, Boo Boo. Pookie, you can do it. Oh, look at you. Mm-hmm. Speaking of situations and shit, I'm thinking about doing something rainbow railroad. I mean Kez Maybe. Maybe. Oh, now he's comparing anarchism in Portland to terrorism. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. 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 You're definitely, definitely a good faith actor. For sure. For sure. Tell you what, I'm going to get you a cell phone number. I'm going to spin up a burner account. Uh huh, brother. You're fucking. You ready to? Uh, you ready to call in, right, brother? was a crisis actor. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Everybody? Joe, uh, well, congratulations, brother. You're not the star of the show. You're just a forgotten memory. <sighs> anyway. <sighs> well, that's what you can expect from Crooked Nose Media's viewership. Um, hey, Gemma. Um, yes, they, they are bad faith actors. They are racists. They are anti-Semites. They are transphobes. They are homophobes. Um, yes. Yes, Joe, we did. Um, if you see somebody who follows crooked nose media, right out of the gate, you know what you're dealing with. 100%. They are terrible, terrible people. I mean... It's crooked nose media for fuck's sake. So, yeah. Um, and they all operate in bad faith. They all fucking gaslight. They all fucking lie. That's that's what they do. So, yeah. Anyway. A trove of phobes. Oh, Ludo. Very good turn of phrase. I like that. Um, they are. They are, in fact, a trove of phobes. Um, they are pretty shit human beings, uh, to be perfectly honest. 
Um, and whoever, I forget the guy's name who runs it. Yeah. Um, uh, well, that was a, that was a thing. <clears throat> just, just chatting brings in some of the worst people. Um, I'm going to move back over to politics. <clears throat> and we're going to see. I do not non-binary. I'm terrified of fucking motorcycles and shit like that. Um, my mom was an ER nurse for quite a time and used to show me people. Um, yeah. No. I'm fucking terrified of them. My mom brainwashed me from real young. I think they're great. I fucking love them. I love a Ducati. I love a fucking, like a cow, uh, a fucking, um, a Hayabusa. Oh, are you kidding me? There's, there's, there's sex on wheels. And if I'm in a, like an open world video game, like Watch Dogs or something like that, fucking throw on a, throw on the headphones, fucking turn off all the lights and just fucking swerve through the streets on a fucking crotch rocket with the rain coming down at night in a video game. Honestly, it's amazing. I love them. I'm terrified of them. Motorbikes could be a midlife crisis. Nah. Um, would you consider some religions more or less compatible with anarchist principles, or are they all to the same degree as problematic? Um, Chapo, that would deter. That would that would be determined. Uh, if, that would be determined by whether you consider Taoism a religion. If you answer that question for yourself, not necessarily for me, but if you consider Taoism a religion, then I would say, no, they're not all problematic. If you don't consider it a religion, then I would say, yeah, basically all of the organized religions are problematic. Um, they have the potential to be... Um, they have the potential to be not... Um, you, like St. Francis of Assisi was basically proto-anarchistic, but the Catholic Church took his teachings and twisted them and turned them into Franciscan uh, monks, which is strictly hierarchical and very authoritarian in nature, right? So, you know, yeah, most of the religions are hierarchical. Most of them are prescriptive. Most of them are authoritarian towards individual autonomy and behavior patterns. Um, so yeah, from an anarchistic point of view, most, if not all, organized religions are problematic for an anarchist. Um, Taoism is not. Um, it is the exception. Maybe it's the exception that proves the rule. Um, but yeah. Um... You get some sex of Buddhism and sky content. See, that's the thing, Marcus. Like, like I said, like you can get pieces of it sometimes. Like, like I said, Saint Francis of Assisi was fucking chill as shit, and very hierarchical in how he did things, and very mutual aidy in how he did things. But then, you know, the church did what the church does. So, yeah, Gemma, Taoism is my soft spot. I, I, you know, the way, the weft, the warp, the flow, the way of the universe, the Tao. Um, the universe changes. The universe is dynamic. The universe isn't a hierarchy. The universe is a web. It's distributed. Um, and so Taoists inherently accept that. They embrace it. They recognize it. They 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 revel in it. They they laud it. They they take great pride in seeing it. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you consider Haitian voodoo voodoo. Um, I don't know enough about it, but it is, it, yeah, I was going to say that's voodoo. Um, it probably, it, but it's probably not a religion. I, that, 
um, M M1030 uh, motorcycle. That's the one that looks like fucking, like, um, looks like a fucking military thing, right? 1030. Yeah, it's the Kawasaki. Yeah, very, very utilitarian. Yeah, Marine Corps uses them. Um, yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. Juicy could be flashy. Uh, oh God, why why are you using Google Images? I taught you people better. Very post apocalyptic. Very um, raw, stripped down. Eight types of fuel, huh? Yeah, exactly, Marcus. What the fuck is a Google? Um, it's 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 a number. It's a one followed by a hundred zeros. Um, looks like a little rain spike. I I I prefer. I mean, here. Um, I mean, I'm a fucking. You could you could just sort of. Do we have a... Let me get a couple here. This is a Hayabusa. This is a 2021 Hayabusa. Um, it's a 200 mile an hour bike. Um, and then a Panagale. That color too, Kaz. <sighs> Fucking Kawasaki Ninja in purple. Seems, uh, yeah, Cafe Fucking Racers. Dude, your part of the world really does dig Cafe Racers. Um, yeah, your part of the world really digs Cafe Racers, which I respect. Um,. They are. They're. They're um, utilitarian and democratic, right? They're of the people, which I can I can respect that. Oh God, a Pinterest link.
Yeah, multiple people in here have. Um, Chapo. Yeah, you guys do seem to like your custom bikes. This is this is what Joe was after here. Gemma, because we want to talk about <laughs> there's a few people I'm sorry Jappa, but there's a few people trying to drag us towards towards like theory and politics and shit and like it the, the, the general community tone seems to be like anything but and yeah um I don't know how we ended up with fucking motorcycles but somebody asked and we ended up there um I started off by doing a whole fucking piece on Sensate, the the Wachowski sisters fucking stuff, and we uh, it's it's Chapo, it's it's all right, it's 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 all right. Like that's normally I'd be all in, like I'd be all in, but you know, occasionally you just need a break. And uh, admittedly, we're in politics right now, but like just chatting was bringing in such toxic fucking people. I took us over back back to uh. Uh, politics because the fucking people that come in on politics aren't fucking horrid horrid people um so you know i mean no no worries man um any other day i i i would indulge the fuck out of this i'd have a, a, you know if you want to talk m the meta ethical analysis of post anarch uh, post anarchism from the the point of view of a like you know delusier's uh delusier and um fucking post structuralist fine you know I, I personally i think the the instant you start talking about philosophy in regards to political science you've lost the thread this is my personal belief i think any any conversation that devolves to the point of discussing actual philosophy probably has already lost touch with reality um so i mean this is just sort of my like as somebody who comes from direct action and organizing um, the truth of the matter is, is that 99% of the people in the world don't want to hear about meta ethics. They don't want to hear about epistemological analysis of their ideology. They want a house. They want food in their stomach. They want not to be like priced out of life-saving medication. And in a you know a a, a post structuralist analysis of the uh, hierarchical systems that otherwise override our day to day life is not functionally use is not functionally useful to ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the world. It's it's academic masturbation, and in a world where. there's a starving dude on the corner who just needs a sandwich. I have a personal rule that like, if I have to get into a true philosophical conversation, we've already lost. We've already lost. There's, there's the majority of people do. They're not equipped to understand this shit. And two, I'm not, entirely sure of the veracity of it quite frankly 
I, I don't put much credence. I don't pay much heed to deep philosophy. You can give your academic ivory towered analysis of the meanings behind or how how is meaning derived and in what way does that impact the development of the psyche like we can do that but you know or you could make a sandwich one of these is productive one of these will stop somebody from starving uh, the meta-ethical analysis of post-structuralist anarchism doesn't feed people. So, I I, I can I can get behind the the, the 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 theory head shit from time to time. I can get there, um, but at the end of the day, I came to theory from action. Um. I think too many theory heads don't come from action. I think the only acceptable way to become a theory head is to come from the streets, is to come from direct action. It, then it, you have the grounding necessary. I think if you come at it from academia into direct action, you don't get a whole lot done. My personal opinion, at least. Let me scroll back. Because I know I got tagged a bunch. I hope I didn't, like, chase you out. Chap a chapu. Chapu bully. Um. Oh, Jesus Christ, Joe. Fucking the BMW flying brick thing. Um, Gemma. Ooh, I do like Sensei. The whole Ventured Whispers thing was such a deep cut. Um. I finally finished it just earlier today, or yesterday, technically. Um, Gemma, I watched the final two and a half hour episode, the, the movie. I was super satisfied. I was super satisfied. And I'm glad somebody fucking canceled the show so the Wachowskis had to tighten the story. They were dragging. They, they had no, they were wandering. They, they needed purpose and direction. And I'm glad they got it from that cancellation. Um, when I get this, uh, bike, I will get this lock. This is the lock picking. Oh, I know this lock. Yeah, 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 the squire. I know this lock. Uh, non-binary. Um. I have a simple rule. Philosophy is allowed, but if a text uses the words hermeneutics, uh, hermeneutic more than one, uh, more than five times on one page, it should be treated like a dirty bomb. <laughs> um, I, I, um, I have a, 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 um, I basically have like, I get triggered by DeBoer. Society of the Spectacle. There's something about De Boer's writing style that annoys the shit out of me. I've never been able to quite pin it down. Hey, Viva. But, um... Something about De Boer's writing style has always just... Um, drives me up a wall. Drives me up a fucking wall. I'm not criticizing his theory. I'm not criticizing any of his hypotheses. I'm not cri criticizing his thesis or his suppositions. I'm, I'm literally not criticizing De Boer. I'm criticizing his writing. Something about De Boer's writing style pisses me off. Maybe that's it, Skulldog. Maybe it's that he's, he feels like he's writing something. He's stating the obvious and you're a fool if you don't understand it. I, I But that... Uh, um, I'm a fan of Bellamare, who writes in this, like, imperceptible, like, completely opaque, academic, pseudo-academic, like, conlang speech, right? Like, that doesn't, that doesn't fucking, 
he he writes like he's gaslighting you. Maybe like you know we could fucking we could just go get Society of the Spectacle. I've got it on a bookshelf and fucking go through it, and maybe I can pin it down once and for all. Um. The skull dog. Hey, bro, can you spare some change? Change comes from within, sir. Have you considered how you're participating in your own oppression? Oh, God. Chapu, well, of course. The reason I asked is because such a position leads to a very different idea of praxis. Here's my idea of praxis, fucking Chapo. Um, yes, I, I understand praxis is a fucking triangle. It's theory leads into action and then reflected upon and adjust theory um, and then new action, right? Um... I don't think it should start with theory. I think it should start with action. And then you reflect upon those actions, and then you base your theory off of that. I think that the traditional triangle that that Praxis is, is, is sort of um, pictured as, with theory at the pinnacle, I think direct, I think action belongs at the pinnacle of the triangle. The, the 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 holy of the holy trinity should be action and then reflect upon that action and then develop theory as necessary um i think too many fuckers like just start with theory right you've got those marxian kantian heidegger fucking i mean even you know at least at least with like kropotkin that motherfucker, yeah, he was a Russian prince, but he went through the, Rus uh, the Russian uh, militarization regimentation program, right? They put him through fucking boot camp, and he came out the other side as an anarchist, right? Like, he, he got to see some shit, and he's like, ooh, I got ideas now, right? Like, there was action. It was action that gave him the ideas. I, I, I yeah. <clears throat> um... Some of that was Joe Straczynski's writing. Uh, had some similar where are we going with this moments. Yeah, Gemma, that was dude, that was dude, Sensei was wandery. Um, real talk, I know it sounds BS, but my uncomfortableness with the first two episodes of Sensei helped me re-examine homophobia I didn't know I had. Interesting. Good on you, Scott. Um, and good on them, I suppose. That's good writing if it makes you do that. Um, later, Squid. <clears throat> Um, got it here too and I have to, I've heard it said that a lot of the translation from French is just terrible maybe that's it um, action idea refinement action idea yeah like I that's you know yeah this is like the fire triangle or the tri triforce yeah basically ref um, I cried several times during sensate and got horny um, dude I'd start with observation, then action. It, it, it doesn't it doesn't go that way though, Gemma. It, that's an idealized version of the triangle uh, of of a square. Now, like we've taken the triangle and turned it into a square. That's an idealized version. I I think the the action because we are a reactive species. Most people become radicalized or engaged to do two things that happen to them from external forces. It's the healthcare system marginalizes you it's the police military police industrial complex that fucking takes advantage of you as a you know a minority it's the fact that you got beat up in the locker room because you were a queer it's that you grew up poor and you saw how society just fucking wasn't set up for you right i would i would i would contend i would argue that the action comes first because we are a reactive species and so something causes you to act or react. Um, the things that happen is what I describe as the observation, maybe experience rather than action. <sighs> see now, see this is this is already we've lost the plot, right? There's a dude who's hungry, right? We need to make a sandwich. That's see, this is my point, Gemma. This is my point about theory heads. I, I sincerely. I, it's, you know, go make a sandwich. I think, spread this, use this, use this, okay? Here's here's what I think. The same way that we tell motherfuckers they need to touch grass, when motherfuckers start going all theory head on you, 
and start talking about you know the uh, the epistemological uh, ramifications of your perceived truths and shit like that, right? When they start doing that, you need to tell them to go make a sandwich. What? There's a starving motherfucker out on the street. Go make a sandwich and feed it to him. Right? Like, don't. Don't. Go make a sandwich. Touch grass. Make a sandwich. That's that's what we need to do with a lot of these fucking theory heads. Is fucking. Dude. Go make a sandwich. Um. I don't think. I mean, you're going to see the harm, Gemma. I don't think. I don't think I I don't think it takes much to do that. I don't think I don't that's not much. That's easy. That the the universe will take care of that for you. I don't think there's very much that we need to do. As as organizers and as activists, I don't they'll come to us. You know, the the they'll come to us. Straight up fucking mom got a $350,000 bill from the hospital um, because she had cancer, right? They'll come to us. I did know that, Ludo. I did. Um, Funny enough, I'm taking a class on legal theory and the topic right now is on legal myths and formalist ideas versus the dirty reality of judges just being humans relying on bias and caprice. Um, Marcus, love it. Fuck Engels, that bitch didn't participate in revolution and then he acted like he was an authority, pun intended, on revolution. See, Kaiser. I mean, Marx was just a fucking... It, Marx was the definition of a fucking, like, theory head. Dude, he's a young Hegelian lawyer whose family owned a vineyard for fuck's sake. Right. This this is this is the face of the people's revolution, the face of the people's revolution, the labor, the working class shall rise up. Who's the face of this? An attorney whose family uh, family owned a vineyard and was a member of the young Hegelians. Really? Just saying. Um, I was 17 and neo-feudalist and I got my first job as a trash person and within three years and being exposed to anarchist thinkers I was hooked good on you Buddhist um, yep uh, see my tent poles as I rev it's the, it's the poverty of philosophy yeah the only people with time to publish philosophy and think about it weren't poor Hmm, interesting. I wonder if there's a corollary there. Some level of causation, maybe? Um. <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, it is, I think it's, I think it's fairly obvious. I think it's fairly obvious, but hey, I've had time to think about it. So we can glean some deeper truth about the education education system. Oh, we should do. Um, no, I don't feel like doing a reading tonight. I really don't. Although I was gonna kind of do like um, <clears throat> I do have this little little book. Um, great anarchists, and it's just got like you know. Some of the highlights of people. Lucy Parsons. Fucking Louise Michelle. Bakunin, of course. Kropokin, of course. Clary. Sterner. P 
Crudon. Godwin. Maldesta. Just, you know, Oscar Wilde's in there. Um. Yeah, redacted, basically. Oh, let's see. Or, or I could read from... I've talked about this book before. I've, I've, it's not even a book. It's, it's, a, it's a manuscript. It's a, it's a, um, this is a manifesto, like straight up. Um, but it is so, so dense and oddly worded and academically worded <clears throat> and, and like conlanged. Thank you, Buddhist. I don't think I'll be doing something that needs recording. If I rec if I read from this, I won't be I won't be recording. Um, if I do recording, like if I do reading from my stuff, I'll record it. But thank you, Buddhist. Fucking Buddhist. Fucking keeping up their end of the the, the deal. Thank you, Buddhist. Um. But I mean, I've talked about this. The Structural Anarchism Manifesto by Bella Mare. Bella Mare is one of the biggest influences. Um in my anarchist philosophy um and he's a contemporary right like he's still alive he's still writing um and barely anybody um but yeah i i pitch up on it um barely anybody knows who he is and he's super influential in like modern theory head, like anarchist theory head circles. Um, and fewer have even read him, let alone know who he is. And I, I just feel like I, I almost like, given that we're talking about like styles of praxis and shit like that, I feel like I, I kind of owe it to you guys to read some of it. Okay, first off, here, it's a nightmare. <sighs> It, the font is absolutely ridiculous in size. It's fucking an odd. It, it's just a nightmare to read this book. Um. Yeah, it's it's terrible. It's a terrible. He, and he does this in all of his shit. It's fucking ridiculous. I I think he intentionally fucks with the world. Like, you're gonna have to work to read my stuff. You're gonna have to work to read my stuff. I don't want people who want easy reading. Like, I sincerely think he, he adds barriers to entry intentionally. Um, I, one day I'd love to sit down with him and talk to him and just ask him a few questions like, dude, bro, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? I, I literally spent, I spent the better part of like my first, like after I signed up with Twitter, the first fucking thing I did was like hunt down Bella Mare and follow him. And so I could DM him. I literally asked him for a definition of a word. I'm like, dude, you got to help me out here. I can, you just made this shit up and you don't add a fucking glossary. What do you mean? The context is not obvious. Like what, what help a brother out? He's intentionally uh, obtuse. Um, Kaiser, speaking of mutual aid, I got some free books for, uh, for, uh, from a free library. Nice. Nice. Um, so I kind of want to read some of this to you. I really do. Um, <clears throat> this is just the preface. This is just the preface. <sighs> but. With all that said, about his weird constructed language and academic speech and over hyphenated st sentence structure, um, he gave me a bunch of really good ideas. He gave me a bunch of really good fucking ideas. Uh, so here goes. The 
font is a nightmare. Um, <clears throat> First and foremost, this book outlines a new form of anarchism i.e. structural anarchism, which advocates for a series of micro-revolutions designed to install in an anarchist federation patchwork of municipalities, cooperatives, and autonomous collectives devoid of capitalism and devoid of any federal state apparatus. Keep in mind, I'm going to be skipping over how many hyphens and slashes there are in here because I assure you, everything is hyphenated. Specifically, structural anarchism is a form of anarchist communism. It is a communism from below rather than the Marxist notion of communism from above, i.e. authoritarian communism. Ultimately, the fundamental purpose of this unique book is to give certain movements an interpretive model or language of understanding and, uh, and action Con uh, concerning the basic workings of our current dominant political economic framework, i.e. bourgeois state capitalism. The purpose is to develop the definitive conclusions separate of a capitalist and Marxist ideology, whereupon an anarchist micro-program of resistance, revolution, and subversion can be implemented in the micro-recesses of everyday life. That is, a micro-program which can stimulate subtle, refined, radical social changes unrelated to the bourgeois capitalist status quo. This book establishes the central workings of the logic of capitalism, including the tenets of structural anarchism. Therefore, the rationale for this philosophical exposition is an excavation of the fundamental basis of the logic of capitalism based not on any Marxist framework, but on a structural anarchism framework. The logic of structural anarchism is a new interpretive framework and a language of analysis, which, although sympathetic to Marxism and its commodity form analysis, develops beyond Marxism into its own revolutionary program and political economy. Um... In addition, this book explores the complications and the complexities of the basic fact that we are increasingly living within the confines of a disciplinary surveillance society where privacy is really based on an individual's ability to expose the surveillance mechanisms monitoring his or her private life. The assumption is that surveillance and discipline are now total and that most surveillance, punitive, and disciplinary mechanisms never attain the light of public knowledge and scrutiny. As a society, Western democracies have moved beyond democracy into a new socioeconomic formation, the formation framework of the soft totalitarian state, a bourgeois totalitarianism where Antonio Gramsci's notion and theory of he uh, hegemony is now obsolete, having dissolved into a type of soft, all-encompassing totalitarianism. No longer is there the full possibility of countercultures and alternative cultures operating independent and outside of dominant mainstream surveillance, discipline, and culture. Counterculture and alternative cultures are now subjugated, monitored, and disciplined within the parameters of this dominant culture of the soft totalitarian state, i.e. the military-industrial complex. It is soft totalitarianism in the sense that we as humans are not imprisoned, disciplined, and punished, akin to traditional hardline totalitarian states, but we are monitored and under surveillance, akin to traditional hardline totalitarian states. <clears throat> like hardline totalitarian states, surveillance is total and continually seeks to refine its totality and its mechanisms of information gathering. Today, though the interconnectedness of the state, its institutions, corporations, and parastate organizations, surveillance, and discipline are total, but there is a litany of disciplinary, punitive, and censorship mechanisms in effect which are soft in nature, capable of applying variable degrees of soft and hard uh, punitive and disciplinary measures, depending on the situation, deviation, and or individual. What distinguishes the soft totalitarian state from the traditional concept of the hard totalitarian state is its ability to have nuances in its disciplinary measures, i.e., the ability to be as hard and in, as inhuman towards dissent and disobedience as hardline totalitarian states, and the ability to be pliable, lax, and nuanced towards various degrees of dissent and disobedience. The soft totalitarian state is ruled, for the most part, by the administrative micro-fascism networks and language, i.e. oligarchies, which, fund, uh, which function and operate at the micro-levels of everyday life. That is, a slow-creeping fascism, seeking to batter down the, and discourage all alternatives and differences to its rule at the micro-level of the socio-economic life in favor of a generalized dispiritness and celebration of the bourgeois capital status quo as rightfully and legitimately the best.
um, Gemma a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Um, <clears throat> this microscopic total war embodying a plethora of micro skirmishes and micro fronts. It's present in our home, our choices, our daily routines, our relationships, our ideas, and most importantly, in our livelihoods. These rulings, administrative, micro fascist, oligarchical network languages present to various degrees in all Western democracies are not necessarily blatant, flagrant, highly visible, or without humor, or without humor and understanding like traditional hardline totalitarian states. Their type of morality, amorality, is not by nature stern and uh, obdurate, but obdurate. Sorry, but it can be. It is. Uh, it is a military-industrial morality, amorality, a type of morality, amorality focused on maximizing the accumulation and extraction of surplus value, that is, capitalist profit. The ma the truth is that this military-industrial morality, amorality, is the logic of capitalism, and it is encoded everywhere and on everything. Today, capitalism possesses humor, wit, and superficial understanding. While it is able to exercise its disciplinary measures and totalitarian indignities upon socioeconomic nonconformities, bourgeois state capitalism upholds a thin veneer of a seemingly democratic meritocracy with nonchalance, a sarcastic half-smile, and a hearty handshake, knowing full well that it is always in control and the determining factor of merit. It is micro-fascism, a sort of pop fascism. It is celebratory monologues celebrating the capitalist marketplace, the capitalist welfare state, and the capitalist mode of production ad nauseum. That is, you know, let me get this folded correctly, that is the individuals, groups, institutions, and contemporary art which embrace its central logic, its pseudo-religiosity, -religi its righteousness, and its call that we all be self-absorbed navel gazers ba basking in and competing for our own microscopic capitalist glory and marketplace brilliance. Despite the thin veneer of seeming democratic meritocracy, the administrative micro-fascist network's language, like all traditional hardline totalitarian states, are comprised of interchangeable cogs who are essentially expendable due to the fact that all that is required to comprise these micro-fascism network language oligarchies is obedience and ideological congruity. Uh, congruity. Uh, every cog and individual unit within these governing micro-fascist network ideal uh, ide <laughs> within these uh, governing micro-fascist network ide language oligarchies can easily be replaced, if need be, by the influx of university graduates and the unemployed, which flood the marketplace and have reduced the job market to a form of debt slavery and wage slavery. The socioeconomic conditions are not the result of chance and or global market fluctuations, but the result of a logical administrative design so as to maintain and facilitate control and governance of the workplace population by these ruling micro-fascist oligarchical networks. The objective is to safeguard, expand, and amplify the socioeconomic processes of the logic of capitalism in, its, in and across everyday life. Um... The author predates fucking Twitter. Um, this was uh, this was actually published in 2016, but it was written well before that. This is part of his um, college dissertation. Um, and yes, Foss, there is basically everything is hyphenated. Um. Basically, everything is hyphenated. It's it's absolutely ridiculous. <clears throat> this is the preface, by the way. Um, this is the preface. It, 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 I, I'm not even like I'm. I'm gonna try and get through the preface itself, but there's there's a lot here. Um, but legitimately, the, his analysis and breakdown is. This is the Structural Anarchism Manifesto by Michelle. The, the Structural Anarchism Manifesto will get you it. Um, it's the logic of structural anarchism versus the logic of capitalism by Michelle Luc Bellemare. Um, but the Structural Dash Anarchism Manifesto will get it. Get you this thing. Um, and it, I mean, you can you can see this is this is sort of I've got post-it notes in it and fucking tabs and fucking highlights and fucking page tabs and um, you know like this thing is honestly like this thing had huge influence in how I perceive how I constructed my theory 
yeah, his 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 modality of analysis and his perceptions of nuances of the the capitalist framework did a, a lot for me. Um, I speak this dude's language for the most part, right? Like this is, it's really weird to read, especially in a lot of places. Like this is just the preface to like dip you in. Um, but when you get into a lot of this stuff, it gets very obtuse to read, um, even more so. Um, but I speak this dude's language. Um, and it, it fucking, it clicked. I was like, Jesus Christ, this dude built theory. You can build theory. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> in the arts, any artist or any contemporary artifact is expendable and disposable. They are expendable and disposable as they are dependent on bourgeois state capitalism for their survival and meaning. Bourgeois state capitalism now being the primary financial supporter of the arts. They are dependent on bourgeois state capitalism for their survival and meaning because these artists and artifacts are devoid of independent vision and independent meaningful substance other than the vision and substance manufactured by the bourgeois capitalist status quo. That is the rampant celebration and total submission that the so uh, soft totalitarian uh, yeah that the so soft totalitarian state disseminates and engenders in the name of bourgeois capitalism. Consequently, any artist or artifact which embodies this essential quality, i.e. ideological congruity with the logic of capitalism, which is ready-made, readily available, and epidemic um, throughout bourgeois state capitalism, can easily become a celebrated, merit-filled nexus of the ruling micro-fascist oligarchical networks, which entwine the capitalist so social fabric into a soft totalitarian state. Um... This is why meds are a thing for me. I totally didn't process any of that. Dude, I, 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 I would need the text. I would need the text. Um, notably, this author bears no illusions that structural anarchism is viable in the current socioeconomic landscape. That's highlighted for me. That's one of the highlighted things. That's, that, 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 that was a fucking revelatory moment for me. Notably, this author bears no illusions that structural anarchism is viable in the current socioeconomic landscape or could even succeed at the moment in replacing the current socioeconomic formation of bourgeois state capitalism. He straight up owns it. That was a revelatory moment. Every fucking... Every... every Every author, every theorist, every fucking activist fucking makes that claim. Right? Like, every single one of them. You know, right? Like, it's revolution now. Bill O'Mara sits back and goes, yeah, we're not ready. We're not ready. We're not there yet. I, I, that was, dude, that, that, that was big. That was big. Like, it's, we're not there for it. We're not there yet. It's not going to happen in our lifetimes. It's not going to happen in our lifetimes. Yeah, torchbearer moment. Like, he, he like, oh, don't don't have expectations. We're not there yet. <sighs> As the majority of citizens are adverse and or oblivious to the notion of the implementation of a new political economic framework and or system, this is primarily due to years of indoctrination, fear, and living with and under the precepts of false consciousness engendered by the dominant capitalist ideology. Better the devil you know than the possibility of another. Better to live with the rampant exploitation and enslavement of bourgeois capitalism than to attempt an unknown, untested, unorganizational form of politics and socioeconomics. However, this does not mean that one should abandon such a venture. 
as, as it is a venture that stimulates hope, inspiration, innovation, and most importantly, the idea that the current socioeconomic system already in place, which manufactures such divisions, discriminations, and inequalities, can be more intelligently organized and can function more equitably for the greatest number. The primary principle that makes the logic of structural anarchism a viable option and a venture worth pursuing in its innate polyrationality analysis and call for open participatory democracy, that is, the polyrationality analysis and open participatory docu- democracy, democracy which logically demonstrates that the current socioeconomic system, i.e. bourgeois state capitalism, can be more intelligently organized and can function more equitably via the implementation of the polyrationality of structural anarchism. That is... A pol- political economic framework, which is founded upon uh, founded on the central grounding praxis of flipping the logic of capitalism on its feet, right side up again, so as to dislodge, displace, and return the lo- uh, the logic of capitalism from where it came as a subordinate appendage of the workforce population in nature. The praxis of the logic of structural anarchism is revolution, not reform. He actually goes on to explain how to use revolution to reform. If you keep reading this manifesto, his version of revolution is a reformative version. It's incremental. It's not necessarily reformation in the traditional sense. It's how this is this is instrumental in Thesusian incrementalism. This is how I built the model for Thesusian incrementalism, is this concept of micro-revolutions that he puts forth. That you have to teach people how to engage in micro-revolutions before they can engage in a revolution. They don't know. They don't know. They are, they are, they are literally subjected to micro-fascism in all corners of their life. Their university professor, their boss their parent, their partner relationship, the, how they engage with a manager in a store, how they treat their own children, how they treat their friends. People are so indoctrinated and so schooled in this thought process of this authoritarian mechanism that it is second nature to them. And it is this concept of micro-revolutions that bore the idea of the Sujian incrementalism for me. Alexander Five, hey there. Um, <clears throat> it is about returning the logic of capitalism to the level of subordinate, namely as a socioeconomic process by which the workforce population democratically sates its basic maintenance requirements. The logic of structural anarchism is about the total annihilation of the logic of capitalism. The modus operandi of the logic of capitalism at the moment is the logical apparatus by which a select few proficient proponents of the logic of capitalism subjugate and dominate vast segments of the workforce population according to the profit imperative so they can grossly and overabundantly indulge their insatiable mercenary impulses for power and for capitalist profit. Therefore, the objective is to abolish bourgeois capitalism in all its forms. This marginalization of so-called bourgeois state capitalism may be a figment of the imagination meant only for classroom uh, contemplation and reflection, but this revolutionary logic, i.e. the logic of structural anarchism, is what is required to do away with capitalist exploitation, capitalist domination, and capitalist enslavement. However, on a long enough timeline, that which is more logical always rises above that which is less logical. And that which is more logical invariably has greater worth for the greater num- greatest number, greater advantages for the greatest number, greater longevity for the greatest number, and finally equals the greatest level of happiness for the greatest number. This is the long-term formula for the eventual displacement and overthrow of the logic of capitalism in favor of something more logical, more polyrational, more plural, more horizontally organized, and thus more objective, more balanced, more egalitarian, more transparent, and ultimately more democratic. This book outlines the idea 
that the logic of structural anarchism is about understanding and engendering socioeconomic reconfiguration, radical social change, not solely destruction, uh, not destructionism. Um, according to the logic of structural anarchism, critique, pragmatic reconfiguration, micro-revolution, and democratic dialogue are the mediums for radical social change, not violence per se. However, due to the unwillingness of bourgeois capitalism to let go of its contextual supremacy and governing power, inevitably means that the overflow of bourgeois capitalism will require some expro expropriation, demolition, and willingness to use forces against the structures, apparatus, and processes of capitalism on a mass scale. The political economic framework of structural anarchism is about engendering a socioeconomic system found on polyrationality, equality, plurality, and the idea of society, where the socioeconomic fabric and all private property, both mental and physical, is collectivized, more intelligently organized, and more rationally distributed among citizens than its current uh, than is currently under capitalism. The objective of structural anarchism is a version of anarchist communi uh, communism. As a result, the use of force is to be precise, structural, and directed at systems of capitalism, namely the capitalist modes of production, consumption, and distribution. Hey, unelected. Um, demolition is a must before reconstruction can begin. <clears throat> What's up, unelected? I have, I have unelected, unelectable. Um, how'd your stream go? Um, I'm, I fucking, dude, it was weird. We went over to just chatting and shit got weird. So I brought us back to politics we fucking shed a bunch of people. Um, and now I'm reading something that people need to hear. Uh, um, yeah. I don't know if I can read that next section though. Okay, we'll skip that. Yeah, I can't read that paragraph. That paragraph has to go. Um, good job. Nice. Get, just get the thing and read it yourself, guys. Are if you really want to, you if you really want to see uh, Bella Mayer, like lay it on, get his book Techno Fascist Capitalism. It's one of these. It's a big ass fucking book. Oh, it. Um, <clears throat> he he. I don't know what happened, but he sort of like got fed up. Yeah, if you read Techno Fascist Capitalism. He has words. He has words. Um, yeah, it's 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 a fucking book. Um, yeah, I, you know what? I could use the stretch of the legs. Give me one sec. I'll actually grab the book. Sorry, it's techno capitalist feudalism. Um, <laughs> it all sort of starts to merge in your brain. Um, yeah, so capitalism. Um, yeah, he. Um, it, it is he again. It's so fucking weird. Okay, so everything from here down is notation. Here, here is. Here's the paragraph on the page. Here is the notation for that paragraph. Yeah, he... Something happened. Yeah, he, he is... Um, like, legitimately... Uh, it, it is... Yeah, he's, he's kind of crazy. Paragraph? Footnote. Paragraph, footnote, notation.
Experiment? I wear it. What's what's an experiment? I I alternate between pinks and blues. Um It is, Quinn. It is it, it is Bellamare is difficult to read. He's difficult to read. There's there's no way around that. Bellamare is difficult to read. Um it is obtuse. It is academically written. It is not for the lay person. Um, yeah. Kez, uh, B-E-L-L-A-M-A-R-E, -L -L -E, and yes, you will. Michelle-Luc Bellamare. <gasps> oh, no, wearing pink nails. Everybody, we're doing it. He's also wearing a skirt. <clears throat> and I can hit a moving target at 200 yards with a rifle. I can drop a deer and I can f field dress it. So. Right? Like, so I like pink nail polish and I, I, I find skirts comfortable. I can also haunt my own food. Traditionally masculine and traditionally feminine uh, tradition is dead pe people's baggage. Set it down. It's just weighing you down. And frankly, it makes you look like an idiot for carrying it around. I do. I enjoy a good dick, too. Hey, Fax. Did they, did they, did they tuck tail and run? They are. They are always telling, Quinn. Yeah. And usually it's because I make their pee, -pee feel weird. We've had, a, we've had quite a few of those. Oh, um, Kez, you're here, you're here now. Um, um, do you like the new D-Gen? I did, uh, I did Rainbow. You notice it's it's literally doing the rainbow. I I reworked it, so now is yeah it's straight up rainbow degen. Yeah, I, I reworked it a bit. Um, before it was it was different, um, and if you actually I I intentionally here there's some nuance to it as well. We, um, if you pay attention, there's bleed over between some of the letters because no, I wanted to recognize that, that there isn't, that there's, there's contained within some of the people, some of the sexuality, some of the identities is more than one thing. It isn't wholly red. It isn't wholly blue. It isn't wholly anything. So you notice that there's bleed over. Sometimes when there's red, there's purples and blues it contained within. Um, so yeah, there is actually nuance to that logo. Um, 
Um, but yeah. Hey, me try. All right, so let's try and finish this. I've got, I've got another page, and I've got a half a page. So I've got a page and a half, basically, to get through this preface, this preface to this manifesto. Um, a bit more nuance and belongs into a museum. Oh. Um, did the scared baby leave? Yes, of course, they, the scared baby left. Um, <clears throat> all right. The logic of structural anarchism is not bent on armed revolution per se. Instead, the logic of structural anarchism is about promoting revolutionary forms of thinking and doing things, i.e. polyrationality, in order to snap the elastic band of capitalism, tethering the workforce population to the capitalist mode of production, that is, capitalist forces and capitalist relations. The strength of the logic of structural anarchism is its notion that radical social change is something which begins very small in the micro-recesses of everyday life, namely microscopic revolutions within the private and public spheres of everyday life, seemingly innocuous, innocent, and banal, yet filled with anarchist revolutionary fervor, namely micro-revolutions of everyday life pointing the way to massive, overwhelming anarchist revolution where nothing is left unchanged and where capitalism is finally deleted. Where financial divisions between people are drastically reduced, where the pangs of capitalist nihilism are extinguished, along with debt slavery, wage slavery, and in general economic slavery, where finally a guaranteed set of socioeconomic rights can buttress civic, <laughs> civic human rights, namely the guaranteed right to a living income, regardless of labor market fluctuations, and the guaranteed right to open participatory democracy, that is, the right to participate more effectively in politics and the governance of one's own life. The premise of this book is that, one, capitalism is a totalitarian logic, i.e., a totalitarian language. Capitalism, uh, two, capitalism is a totalitarian logical apparatus which houses an insatiable drive for ownership knowledge within itself. This insa three, this insatiable drive for ownership knowledge is the will to power innate in nature and the human species. Four, capitalism can never be totally done away with. It can only be marginalized, minimized, and decentralized out of existence because it is an outgrowth of the insatiable drive for ownership knowledge, which cannot be uh, which cannot but produce surplus. That is multivaried surplus value of all types and kinds. Five. The only revolutionary logic capable of overthrowing the logic of capitalism is the logic of structural anarchism, namely polyrationality. The logic of structural anarchism is the sole revolutionary logic because the logic of structural anarchism is the limit of liberty, autonomy, collectivism, and pragmatic egalitarianism. Beyond the logic of structural anarchism is total chaos, i.e. nothing, nothingness and barbarism. As a result, the logic of structural anarchism is the next phase, the next stage of political economic evolution and revolution devoid of bourgeois capitalism. The logic of structural anarchism is the pragmatic polyrationale of miniature, uh, miniature insurrections within the micro-recesses of everyday life designed to decentralize, horizontalize, and democratize decision-making authority and private property in service of all by all in relative equal measure. The adversary of the logic of structural anarchism is capitalist microfascism. Microfascism is those discourses, language, networks, and entities who embody the tyranny of the capitalist logic and exercise this despotic logic without thought, compassion, and notion of consequence. Unlike the Marxist notion of class, microfascism is a fanaticism which stems from all cultural sectors, social sectors, and economic sectors. It is a deep despotic impulse and fervor for bourgeois capitalist rule. 
The sole purpose of microfascism is to asphyxiate all counter logics to capitalism in order to prevent the advancement of everything and everything which is different, collectivist, and alternative to the bourgeois capitalist status quo. Microfascism is micro dictatorships dotting the city landscapes, exercising totalitarian rule within limited mi miniaturized autocracies. Whether it is a household, a small business, a corporate, uh, a corporation, a courtroom, or a university department, etc., microfascism is tyranny, a one-way monologue droning on and on at the micro levels of everyday life, drilling fear, repression, and perpetual indoctrination. If there is divergence from the logic of capitalism and the bourgeois capitalist status quo, namely bourgeois mediocrity. <clears throat> In contrast, micro-revolution is the structural anarchist term for all those moments of everyday life where micro-tyranny and micro-fascism is usurped, where micro-dictatorships are defied, disobeyed, subverted, and overthrown. Micro-revolutions are all of those moments when and where an individual is empowered with a sense of self-determination, collectivism, and autonomy, which temporarily runs counter and contrary to the bourgeois capitalist status quo. The micro-revolution of everyday life is the road to the anarchist revolution and the structural anarchism complex. It is the micro-strategies and micro-tactics, consciously or unconsciously used everywhere to defy and usurper the many micro-tyrannies manufactured by bourgeois capitalism both conceptually and materially. Micro-revolution is underground barter, free goods, and guaranteed equality. Micro-revolution is absenteeism, graffiti, pop-up galleries, occupy movements, referendums, clandestine assemblies, property damage, etc. Hence, this manifesto is well designed to give form, structure, and a theoretical basis for these conscious or unconscious, seemingly unrelated acts and cries of liberty, autonomy, collectivism, and self-determination, i.e., existential cries for pragmatic egalitarianism and greater pluralism. <clears throat> if microfascism is the ruling ideas, ruling art, and ruling social groups of our epoch, then micro-revolutionism is the revolutionary, evolutionary spirit, art, acts, and minds of our epoch. Cyberheart, thank you for the follow. <sighs> Uh, which strive for a more equal, transparent, democratic, collectivist, ideation, uh, ideational, comprehensive framework based on a greater egalitarian organization of the workplace populace. The anarchist prax uh, praxocrat is the cognizant uh, antithesis to the micro-fascist technocrat. Namely, those technocratic cogs which inhabit the vast interrelated micro-fascist networks of the military-industrial complex. The anarchist, uh, anarchist praxeocrat establishes greater liber uh, liberality, autonomy, collectivism, polyrationality, and self-determination wherever he or she contextualizes or usurps the logic of capitalism wherever he or she establishes greater egalitarian organi uh, organization beyond the logic of capitalism and its fascist administrative apparatuses. You have no idea how many fucking hyphens were in that fucking paragraph. Honestly, he went to town. <laughs> Finally, this book is a critique towards the political e economy of contemporary arts. This book gives reasons why contemporary art has devolved into something bland, mediocre, and lame, i.e., into a tool of bourgeois capitalism and its totalitarian pursuit of capitalist profit. This book explains how and why contemporary art has eroded the way it has in recent years and has fallen under the thumb of the ruling micro-fascist oligarchical networks for its continued survival and sustenance while there is more art to be found throughout society than ever before in history. Everywhere, we find contemporary art, contemporary art professionals, and newly minted art institutions burgeoning, and yet nowhere is revolutionary art visible, understandable, and identifiable, having itself been submerged and crushed beneath the vast expanse of meaningless, nonsensical, nonsensical artistic kitsch, present at all levels of bourgeois capitalist art, education and all levels of the capitalist marketplace and all levels of this uh, of the uh, of the bourgeois capitalist art world today 
Contemporary art saturates everywhere, represents, uh, represents and reflects the average tastes, average wants, average aspirations, and the average meaningless nonsense of average bourgeois herd mediocrity. That is the wannabe bourgeois. And this is no accident. It's the artificial construct of the socioeconomic processes of the bourgeois capitalism designed solely to, one, subsume and marginalize revolutionary art due to its revolutionary capabilities, that is, so as to render these revolutionary capabilities ineffective, two, is designed to control the arts, i.e. to control what is produced, ideationally disseminated, and three, this is designed to congeal ideologically a standard tightly knit mass of the workforce population geared towards the accumulation and extraction of surplus value, i.e. capital. Art subsumed in service of bourgeois state capitalism no longer strives for revolution, creativity, and innovation. To the contrary, it is now anti-revolution, anti-creative, anti-innovative, anti-art. Its goal is now averageness, lameness, dullness, banality, mediocrity, triviality, standardization, and indoctrination. It is engendered this way so that art can facilitate its capitalist circulation as a commodity in and across the military-industrial complex, and so that it can embody the exact capitalist imperatives and microfascism centralized in the logic of capitalism. <clears throat> in sum... We shall not wake up to uh, one day miraculously to the structural anarchism complex, since the revolutions require hard work and sound commitment. But the logic of structural anarchism is, on all factual accounts, correct and the inevitable next step. As a result, the logic of structural anarchism forever pulls the workforce population towards its revolutionary logic, compelling it to revolt, riot, and strike. In fact, the value of this revolutionary logic, poly compelling, is uh, it is to um, it to revolt. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, in fact, the uh, value of this revolutionary logic, poly rationality, is that it can never be un underestimated, ignored, and fully marginalized. For its inherent poly rationality, forever returns to the revolutionary vanguard. The reason is the logic of structural anarchism and the structural anarchism complex correspond better with the needs of the workforce population and nature. And with every miniature uh, insurrection, this fact is increasingly becoming self-evident. The fact is the logic of structural anarchism is intrinsic within the insatiable drive for ownership knowledge along with the logic of capitalism. However, contrary to capitalism, the logic of structural anarchism is the equ equalization algorithm encrypted in logical rationality itself. Capitalism is merely an offshoot of the uh, equ <laughs> equalization algorithm. As a result, the polyrationality of structural anarchism voraciously proceeds towards con uh, contextual supremacy ad nauseum. Thus, the gravitational power of the logic of structural anarchism over and over the logic uh, of capitalism. In short, capitalism has an expiration date, and the date is well past. Consequently, the logic of capitalism is finished, and it's only a matter of time. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to read. It's ridiculous to consume Bellamare. Right? He he writes in an obtuse manner intentionally. He uses a billion hyphens per paragraph. He um he he basically conlangs. He constructs language wherever is necessary for him to do that he feels like it. Um but his analyses his breakdowns, if you fucking sit there and go through them, are... I, they're brilliant. Like, and he's a contemporary. This motherfucker's still writing. He's still writing. Right? Like, this is the latest one. And it, it's a beast. It's a beast. Um... Parallel frameworks of medieval and capitalist feudalism.
he literally does an analysis of how capitalism is essentially just medieval feudalism rebranded. How it, there are direct, direct corollaries from every element into today, into capitalism. It's feudalism. Honestly. Hey, Mossy. I, I, I can't, like, I can't begin. It's, a, it's annoying to read. It's annoying to read. Oh, no. Uh, Quinn, Bill and Mayor would argue it, it, is, it is it. It's not that we're heading there. He would argue that it is it. That they are functionally one in the same. Yeah, that would be his, his premise that he would run with. Um, let me just see something really quickly. Uh, bookmarks. Is that really, oh, that's really that size though. I can't. Uh, um. Let's go with that one. Chapo, there's better ways to do that. There's better ways to do that. I'm an example of that. I, I have most of those skills, um, and I obtain them from the private sector. There's, yeah, most assuredly there's better ways to go about that without signing your being over to the, the military-industrial complex. Yeah. Oh, this is literally just a... Oh. Well, fuck it. It's got to be what it's got to be. Fucking. Um. Really? There you go. It's quite, quite the description, Michelle. Quite the description. Um. Okay, so. Escape. That's that's a huge it's a huge descriptor. Yeah, there's no way. I mean, really? Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, it's only okay, it's only thirty-eight. Um Maybe I can trim something out. Hold on, give me one sec, give me one sec, give me one sec. Um that work I think that may work all right <laughs> um, okay um
I mean, punk and music, like music has been a punk fucking inspired generations of anarchists. It's an art. That's part of why he, that's part of what he talks about, right? Like he's talking about how art has been captured intentionally. Like it's part of the logic of capitalism to capture art because art can inspire that sort of thing. Um, Kez um, and anybody else who holds a library card, check the library. Wesser, thank you for the follow. Um, oh, and I don't know if I thanked you, Cyberheart, but thank you for the follow as well. Um, yeah, it's art has that that capability, and that's part of what he talks about in here. Is he really does do an entire section on how art has been captured intentionally? Um, but if you really want to hear him go to go to town, this one. And it's even, it's fucking heavy. It's fucking heavy. Um, specifically, techno-capitalist feudalism repeatedly manufactures, maintains, reproduces, and expands a small capitalist aristocracy and millions upon millions of economic serfs, namely a global urban suburban peasantry organized sufficiently uh, uh, sufficiently and efficiently according to the micro-caste system ruled by a state finance corporate aristocracy administering a network of giant data-collecting smart cities, i.e. a network of cybernetic ant colonies. And like their 18th century counterparts, i.e. the agricultural peasantry, these modern-day post industrial debt serfs and wage serfs possess the same conservatism, reactionism, ignorance, pig-headedness, bigotry, and backwardness once possessed and expressed by 18th century agricultural serfs. Like the 18th century agricultural serf, the new post-industrial, post-modern economic serf is a highly obedient, uh, obedient being who is very loyal to his or her capitalist overlords. Wobbin, thank you for the follow. Yeah, like he doesn't pull punches in this book. Like, honestly, he says a bunch of shit that is like, Michelle, are you sure you want to put that to paper? Yeah. Like, there's stuff in there I would not read out loud. I wouldn't read it on stream. It's, yeah. Uh, hey, Bitwin. Art is not the revolution, but art can play a part. Such a spreading ideology, but that is just the start. Uh, Marcel Cartier. <laughs> yeah, Wobbin's um, Erico capitalism isn't a thing. It's not a thing. I'm sorry. It's not a thing. If Scott's here, he's going to feel like it's not a thing. Erico capitalism isn't a thing. Capitalism is inherently a hierarchical, oppressive, and co uh, coercive system. <laughs> It just is. Like, I mean, we literally just fucking did a dissection here. Like, I mean, it fucking read the entire manifesto of structural anarchism and the logic of, uh, of uh, fucking uh, of capitalism. And you can see how it, it, they are, it is a misnomer. They're not compatible. Um, so, and caps aren't actually a thing. Um, it's, it's not a thing. Um, one is hierarchical. One is about the collapsing of hierarchies. One is about eliminating coercive elements within uh, within your social framework. The other one is inherently coercive, right? Like this is, you can't, it's not a thing. You can't be an anarchist and be a capitalist. It's just not compatible ideologies. Um, so... Amorous with that cursed ass shit. Um, and it depends on what um, Wobbins, I think it was. Yeah, Wobbin. Wobbin, sorry. Or Woven. Um, it depends what form of libertarianism that you're talking about, whether you're talking about like neo-libertarianism or North American libertarianism, um, or like egalit uh, or um, Enlightenment era European uh, libertarianism. <clears throat> so that sort of, it just sort of depends. 
um, which one of those you were asking about. Most people usually ask about um, like North American uh, neo-libertarianism. Um, Scott, I mean, I'll just fucking, dude, I got fuck it. Rothbard was full of shit. He lied on purpose. He created a term, uh, a set of terms, intentionally to undermine uh, uh, undermine uh, arguments within the political sphere. He operated in bad faith. Like it, honestly, like even if you wanted to argue, fucking, I, I'm in a position right now with fucking sources. Even like, it's not a thing. It just isn't capitalism. It's crooked as shit, man. You can't be an anarchist and be a capitalist. You can't. <clears throat> All you are is an anti-statist. Mm. Kez, you're welcome. Uh, well, your view of it um, is not necessarily correct, Woben. Um, capitalism first requires uh, private owns of uh, private ownership of the means of production as a fundamental component of its economic mo uh, mode. You need private ownership of the means of production to establish capitalist model. So while I can, um, I, I can respect your opinion, it, it isn't grounded in any level of economics or political science. Um, you, you're missing, uh, you're missing a key component of capitalism. Um, and well, that private property becomes the point of contention because you're privatizing public, uh, public goods. You're privatizing trees and land and water. You're privatizing air. You're privatizing. Okay. So these, these sorts of things become the point of contention immediately. But, um, Private property is the coercive act, not the public property. You are not born owning anything. You were born into a world that was already occupied. You don't get to own the tree. The tree pre-existed. The coercive element is you making the claim over it. You, you literally have it backwards, as most capitalists do. Saying, saying the water belongs to everybody is, is coercive. No, saying the water belongs to only you is coercive. That's just common sense even. The water will exist prior to you and after, to you, after you. It is a public good. It belongs to everyone, not to you. Uh, personal property, cyber. Those would be personal property. Either way, if you want to make a distinction of common property, it still el eliminates the element of private means of production. The private property is still the issue. And the private property directly impacts the sandwich. This is one of those areas where actual discussion of these does impact people dying. Because the fact of the matter is, is that concept of private property leads to insulin rationing. It leads to unnecessary medical uh, me uh, access to medicine being a thing in our society. It leads to people being houseless. It leads to people being starved to death on our streets. That concept of private property kills people. It's unethical.
And it, you better believe that these motherfuckers will go for the air because they're already going for the water. They took the land. They took the, they took the water. They will go for the air. I assure you, it will happen. You can see examples of it already occurring. Fucking canisters of Canadian fresh air being canned in Canada and then sold in Beijing to those with asthma and allergies due to the smog and pollution that industry, that capitalism has created. They took the land. They took the water. They're coming for the air. They will, they will seize it all. There will be a limited few. There will be a limited few that own the rights to everything. Do you know how difficult it is to own mineral rights in America these days? Because most of the mineral rights of the land were sold off generations and generations ago. And when they sell the, uh, sell the property to you, they do not transfer mineral rights usually that it's, it's extraordinarily rare in many places in the world to get mineral rights with your property because those were sold off ages ago, right? It's, oh yeah. Yep, problem reaction solution. It's a it's a technique. Did somebody just throw Mao at an anarchist? Is that a thing that happened? Hang on. Always good to try. Why don't you uh, try and hit me with Stalin, too, while you're at it? <laughs> because I've been I definitely argue, uh, arguing for centralizing authoritarian communism. For sure, that's what I've been arguing for. Yeah, definitely. Anarchism, centralizing authoritarian communism. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Um, vanguard, vanguardistic hierarchical systems are definitely the thing that the anarchists talk about all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so you don't want a central committee? Mm. Um, how do you think, how dangerous do you think automation is? Uh, in its current iteration, Chapo, not great it's 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 pretty bad it's pretty it's a pretty disrupting element um the question comes down to who owns the who who owns and profits from the labor of the robotics or the automation who profits from that a handful of people Considering the technology is improving, it's owned by privates and the state. Yeah, there you go, Chapo. So basically, we're on the same fucking. Wobbin, or we could look at something, while well, albeit a microcosmic example compared to the macro of uh, centralizing uh, authoritarian communism, we could look at like the anarchistic Republic of Kospaya that lasted for 375 years and operated upon communitarian standards and didn't have people starving to death, albeit again, much, 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 much smaller than China for sure, but operated on a hierarchical uh, anarchistic med uh, modality of operation as far as you know governance went no police no army no judges um for 375 fucking years um they went up against the papal states successfully they uh, grew crops successfully they fucking fed themselves successfully and they distributed it along lines of communitarian principles so much akin to a family nobody particularly owned any individual thing and they all shared um, and they were highly successful, um, up to and including the point that the papal states were so worried about their economic gains in the region that they um, literally like barricaded them in. 
um, as as as, a, as a, they literally surrounded them on all sides, um, and forced them to sign over their sovereignty. Um. So. You know. Who's got time for actual history? Um. Just do, um. Oh, pfft, I can spell. There you go. Just read. I, I can, I already got an essay on it. Um, the, anarchist Repu the Anarchistic Republic of Cospia, or How to Piss Off a Pope and a Duke. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, I remember this name. Oh, no, multisyllabic words. Oh, no. But critiquing my language based on multisyllabic, the usage or selection of multisyllabic words, uh, while using a multisyllabic word to critique that isn't a bit hypo hypocritical, is it? And also, <clears throat> would monosyllabic uh, terminology actually be effective in discussing some of these techniques, seeing as most of these uh, techniques and uh, concepts use multisyllabic words as their formative uh, definitional set? Right? Like, Anarchism, right? There's there's four syllables just in anarchism alone. Anarchos, three syllables in the Greek root word. Oh no, he's using multi-syllabic uh, syllabic words. Yep, most terminology is multi-syllabic, including multi-syllabic. Anti-intellectualism. Asimov had a quote about that. Anti-intellectualism has been a constant thread winding its way through our political and cultural life, nurtured by the false notion that democracy means that m uh, my ignorance is just as good as your knowledge. But hey, who's got time to address the actual substance of the uh, of the statement, right? He used big word. Oh no. <laughs> Golly, Kai, you use your mouth prettier than a $5 hooker. Of course, it's written by a brilliant man. Bellomare's a genius, Scott. Like, I'm, I'm not un unabashedly. Like, he's a fucking genius. Like, his his political analysis is... His political and economic and socio... Like, his socioeconomic analysis... I don't think he has a modern contemporary. I don't. It, it's... He's fucking brilliant. Um, Michel-Luc Bellomare... M I C H E L space L U C space B E L L A M A R E. He's brilliant. He writes like a fucking weirdo. His his writing is completely obtuse, but his analysis is astounding. Um. Do you think that if things continue this way, there might be a potentiality of a future where there's a huge class of have-nots who can cons uh, can't consume and don't have the skills required? What do you think would happen in such a case? Um, Chapo, where do you live? I'm not looking to dox you. I'm just curious. Where do you live? Hey, Raphael. 
up, you French fuck. Hey there for twos. See, this is my point, Quinn. I, Quinn. I, I'm, I'm, I'm of the mind that we're already there. Southern Europe. Okay. I can't, I can't be as specific for your region. If you are an American, I would, t I would point you to Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, some parts of Kentucky, West Virginia, especially. Um, and say there are entire communities who are falling behind, are not consuming, are not avid consumers because they can't afford to participate in the capitalist consumer economy that we've set up. I, I would, I would point to significant portions of the U S population and entire States in some instances that would fit that would qualify that statement. Yeah. I don't think it's a future. I think it's here. And yeah, I mean, South Carolina, more Georgia to some extent. Yes. Um, I'm a fucking, I'm a, t I'm a, I'm a talk, I'm going to talk to fucking Michelle Scott. I'm going to tell him there's an end cap using your terminology. <laughs> He's going to lose his fucking mind. He's going to lose his fucking mind. Um, he hates you people, by the way, he hates you people. <laughs> um, he doesn't even, he's not even of the mind that like, oh, they don't exist. He just hates you <laughs> like, straight up. Um, fucking yeah um i think that i think in the, in if you look at those examples of the those con those consumers being left behind or left out of the consumer capitalist economy as it were you get to see examples of what the ramifications of that um yeah you're wrong and everybody knows it. you guys can't even get your own terminology right um you're literally just foot soldiers for the existing system. <laughs> Musk should be my god. Goofy fucks. Uh, I wonder why nobody takes you seriously. Um, if you want examples of the behavior patterns that would creep out of them, then they become subject to populist movements. They become more subject to um, propaganda uh, efforts, things such as Sky News. Fo uh, I'm sorry, not Sky News. Well, probably Sky, but uh, Murdoch, Fox News, OAN, um, these sorts of things. Um, yeah, you would notice that they would become uh, far more subject to those things. They would become far more subject to generalized right-wing re uh, reactionary um, radicalism. You would see them participating in more um, theocratic or organized religion-style movements. You would see them engage in violent upheavals against what they perceive to be uh, changes against the status quo that they've been indoctrinated into. I mean, any of this sounding familiar? I think it's already here, Jappa. I, I, I sincerely think your entire premise already is a thing. Yeah, I don't think it's a future event. I think it's, I think the last 25 years of, of US history probably exemplify it. A disability in Canada and getting off of it is such a pain. Uh, why isn't Elon Musk a perfume? Uh, <laughs> I'm on, oh, nothing more than that. Um, I'm on disability in Canada and getting off of it is such a pain with way too many risks. Even if they're less so in the US, costs keep going up. In time, we, my roommate and I, managed to have some money to partake in, have things. The government goes, we gave you too much and then reduces our checks. It's sickening. Yeah, it's it is a debt trap, Cyberhar. Uh, Cyberheart, it is it is literally a debt trap. Yeah, it's a debt trap. the the it, The problem with the welfare state is that it doesn't go far enough. If if you were actually attempting to bridge the gap between neoliberal capitalism, um, 
and the welfare state, it needs to go much, much further. Welfare should go up to something like fifty, fifty-five thousand dollars $55,000 a year. Like you should be able to make $55,000 a year in the U.S. and still have access to Medicaid, Medicare. You should still have access to um, like child, like things to deal with your child, SNAP benefits and all sorts of stuff. All of those welfare uh, programs should be, be able to bridge that gap. When when you lose your health care, your Medicaid at like $13,500, you can't pay for your health care then, let alone your rent, let alone your vehicle, let alone food, right? Like there is a chasm between those. Um, so to get people off of the welfare, if that was your goal, you would extend the welfare further, not restrict it more. But that's not the goal. That's not the goal at all. So... Seventy-two should be the North American welfare cutoff. Again, I'm 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 open to that. Um, but I mean the the premise stands. Yeah, the premise stands. That 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 is the goal is to keep you down and controlled. Um, and yeah, if we were actually looking to lift people out of poverty, the welfare programs would extend well, well, well past that. Yeah. Uh, Darvin Lido, thank you for the follow. Um, <laughs> I, Versa, that doesn't, no, that doesn't hold water, Versa. I, I counter you with has. I counter you with infrared. Yeah, Versa, that statement doesn't hold water. There are three kinds of tankies. One type is me, sane and not anti-unity, and the other are insane people who don't understand dialectics and project their whiteness. Has. He's Arab. He's brown. Like, and he ain't sane. So, yeah, that's my counter to you there, Versa. Is, is, it, I challenge you to go to infrared stream and tell him he's projecting his whiteness. And if you're doing that, feel free to let me know when you're doing it because I want to see that clip. Uh... I mean, I've got so many state institutions to, to work with, Scott, I could get the UBI to like $150,000 a year by the time, like, I don't even touch healthcare. I wouldn't even have to touch healthcare, Scott. I could keep Medicaid, Medicare the entire way through. Every time we dissolve a state institution, I get to add to the UBI. I got so many fucking departments to choose from. I could get that UBI to $150,000 a year and still have fucking universal uh, single payer healthcare. First up, military, it's gone. Yeah. The DOD fucking we need to restructure that entirely. That's that's a black hole of money. That's that's the first one on the fucking chopping block. After that, DHS, after that, ICE. After that, probably the FBI and the CIA. Um the BATFE can can be on the list somewhere at some point silver they're they're further down but I, I i think the fbi and cia probably pose more of a direct threat to most of us um and by most of us i don't mean americans i mean fucking just humans like you know yeah like basically the police apparatus
how do you, Versa, this is my challenge to you. How do you rectify Leninism and Maoism with Marxism? Because Marxian critiques versus Leninist and Maoist implementations would generally be perceived as at best bad faith and realistically an intentional uh, uh, revisionist version of Marxist ideology. Like, how do you square that? Is my question to you? Because this is this is legitimately like I, it's very rare I talk to an actual MLM. How, because Marxian, yeah, like it, Marxism doesn't line up with Leninism and Maoism. It doesn't. And while I have huge complaints about Marxist centralizing communism, he is far less. vanguardistic and authoritarian than Mao and Lenin, especially Mao. Um, but Lenin, I mean, Jesus Christ. I, 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 there's, there's so many conflicts between those three. Marxism and then Leninism and Maoism. I mean, Leninism and Maoism don't really line up either, but I'll, I'll for the purposes of brevity and streamlining our argument, I really like to know how somebody who calls themselves an MLM, how do you square Marxism with the Leninism and Maoism? Because there's too many contradictions contained within. That that always, I've always had that question. And I, I, I truly am operating in good faith here. I really just want an answer. Like how the fuck do y'all make that work in your heads? As that would be like for me, like that would be like when like we joke around as anarchists is like anarcho -mon monarchism. It just doesn't make sense, and that that's always that's always been a thing for me. It's like how the fuck do they square that? I prefer my scotch neat. Also, uh, <laughs> over. Um, Nice McAllen. Single malt scotch. Good night, Caboose. Yeah. I don't drink anymore, but um anybody who comes over gets gets a gets a nip. Mm, smells amazing. God, it smells amazing. Uh, that is the 12 year, but I have a 25 as well, uh, himself. Oh, that, that comes out when people die. Yeah. When people die, that, that can come out. But if you come over, I'll fucking, I'll pour some 12 for you. Um, what does scotch taste like? It depends on the scotch, Chapo. Um, I mean, not really, Quinn, to be perfectly honest, um, but, oh, Silver, it's been open several times. I, I live in Vegas. Are you kidding me? So many fucking people have dropped dead, <laughs> gone missing and or dropped dead. Um, rock on himself. Um, Chapo, it depends on the scotch. People have described that to me as um, cherry, chocolatey, oaky, um, barbecuey. Um, I've I've heard some interesting descriptions. <laughs> Campfire. Tastes like smoky fire. Um, the oak casks that they they age it in are quite a thing. Um, lettuce atome. Thank you for the follow. Either way. Um, sorry if I butchered your name. <laughs> it 
Zen, that's an interesting take. I choose to believe that anarcho-monarchism is where there's one person who's the monarch, but it's just an empty title so people can defer things they don't want to deal with to someone specific. <laughs> the king is, the, the, the monarch is the trash. Fucking, yeah, I don't feel like doing this. Fucking send it to the idiot. Um, That's actually... Yeah, that's, that's that's actually that's kind of a decent idea. Fuck. Sure, 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 sure. You're in charge. Yeah, you're 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 in charge. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, well, we need you to make this decision for us today. Uh, oh, what's the decision? Mm. <laughs> the sin eater. Uh basically, yeah. <laughs> basically, the sin eater. Ah, uh, let's see. Chapo, yeah, I've heard that one too. It's fucking fake as well. You can you can put words next to each other. That doesn't mean they make a coherent thing. All right, like up downism, right? In outism, like you can you can put things next to each other. Like language works that way, but it also works in a way that it doesn't necessarily make a coherent sentence or statement or idea. Have I seen the re-education in Marxist Paul AMA video? No. No. Versa. Um, it, it doesn't, Redacted? Like many of the, the, the claim to anarchism ideologies out there, it, it, it doesn't make sense. Hey, you know those, those people that are against the nation state who, who, who believe it doesn't meet a philosophical challenge for its existence? Plus the nation state. Interesting. Yeah. Haikus are pretty, but they don't always make sense. Refrigerator. <laughs> For two, that's really good. Uh, until I read enough, I know uh, uh, if I agree with Scott or Kai, can I call myself anarcho curious? I mean, you can. Um, the Government of No One, The Theory and Practice of Anarchism, Silver, by Ruth Kenna. Um, or The History of Anarchism by Peter Marshall, Demanding the Impossible. Which is considered a a sort of uh, sort of definitive text, um, and <clears throat> you know, uh, let's see, let's see. I'm just I'm just gonna turn I'm gonna turn to the chapter on um, on anarcho uh, uh, capitalism. Hang on. Hmm, that's weird. I'm sure it's in here somewhere. Just give me a minute. Maybe, let's see, chapter, no. Let's see, chapter 13, maybe, no. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's gotta be here somewhere, right? Give me, give me a minute. I'm sure, I'm sure it's there somewhere. <sighs> See, there's post left anarchism as even. Let's see, even even post left anarchy got a got a mention in here. That's that's interesting. Let's see, anti capitalist. No, let's see. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Social ecology even green shit. No, no. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'm sure it's in there somewhere. <clears throat> yes, Silver. Demanding the Impossible, the his, uh, history, uh, history of Anarchism by Peter Marshall. Um, but um, start here. 
if you're if you're just curious, start with the government of no one, the theory and practice of anarchism by Ruth Kinna. K I N N A. Um I mean all of that sort of stuff, Kez, is readily available. I mean, do I have like physical copies? I think I've got one. Um, but yeah. Uh, Versa, um, holy shit, Eric Dos Capital. Um, that's not even that. That's okay. So this doesn't include um, Korea, Japan, um, China, and Africa. Oh, and Latin America. It, it, some of Latin America is in here. I have other books for that. Um, when all is said and done on sort of the global history of anarchism, it's it's about out here. Um, and yes. Off topic, but I'm wearing a grandpa sweater with my giant black combat boots and the vibe that it gives is wonderful to me. I'm glad, Mossy. I'm glad. Um... Can, can't anarcho-monarchism be basically sterner? Everyone is their own king. Um, I suppose you could make that argument, Amras. You can make that argument. Um, I think, though, we're going to have an issue with... Hang on, give me one sec, though. I just want to check something. I just want to check the etymology here. Yeah, there seems to be, like, monarchs fucking have a lineage, and it power is passed down. It, titles. I think we've got an etymological issue with the anarcho-monarchism there. Amorous? I like the idea, though. I like the way you were thinking. Oh, like, library copies. Oh, um, no, I don't think Echo's in the library. Um, I mean, I can make that happen. That's not a big deal, Kez. He's got a lot of works. You know what? Let me see if there's a collection already made. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll make that happen for you guys. Um, is a spook um cool mossy enjoy school have a good one um what is i thought sterner was cool into root canvas is revolted in. dude no sterner sterner is a fucking sociopath sterner is necessary for any anarchist to understand individual autonomy to like the fullest degree sterner is fucking toxic though he's super fucking toxic he's a fucking sociopath sterner sterner is a fucking nightmare uh, lettuce for sure like the guy's batshit insane um but it takes that level of insanity to truly like embrace yourself i think to, to to the degree that he did to be able to say like you know what fuck everything yeah i am all that matters sure 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 i'll work with you but at the end of the day why do i answer to anybody but you right and with a world that is so mutualistic, like a world of philosophy that is so mutualistic, like Proudhon and uh, Kropotkin and Bakunin, and it was so, anarchism was so heavily rooted in these mutualistic elements, it took someone as concentrated as Stirner to, like, like I tell people, like a, a tenth of a drop of Stirner in anarchistic philosophy, and you're good. You just need a fucking drop of him. But you do need that drop of Stirner. You do need him, but for the love of God, don't ever be a Sternerist. They're fucking insane. Sterner was a madman. He he unironically believed might makes right. I have every right to take your shit, plain and simple. 
if I so choose to satisfy my ego to end your life and take your property, there is nothing in this world that prevents me from doing that. He's crazy. He's fucking crazy. But he's not wrong. The reality of the situations, the reality of reality is that, yeah, at the end of the day, if a dude wants to kick in your door, take your shit, the only thing stopping him really is the power dynamic, the, the free association, the, the, um, the, uh, was it, what did he call it? The network of egos or the fucking group of egos or the collective of egos, right? Like he's fucking crazy, but he's not wrong about a segment of humanity. And a lot of it was directed at the church. A lot of what Sterner was writing was intended to take down the, the Christian church in Europe at the time. So when you contextualize it against this like oppressive, organized religious religiosity, this theocracy that was everywhere, and you understand exactly how what he was up against, you start to you start to understand it a little bit better. It doesn't excuse some of his takes. Some of his takes are fucking like I said, they're 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 psychotic. They're psychotic. Um, but also, in a world where that is a thing for people that there are people walking around that do believe that it is fully within their right to just end you and take your shit. I think a little drop of that in your philosophy goes a long ways. I think understanding that that is how a human works on some level. But then you temper it. You temper it with the mutualists. You temper it with the understanding that no man is an island, that you're the beneficiary of untold generations of accumulated knowledge and wealth, and you benefit from the public commons. But yeah, I, I, I do think you take a little bit of Sterner, but not no more than a little bit. Just like I said, he's fucking nuts. Um, <clears throat> um chapo thoughts on the 14 points i think i um yeah, yeah, yeah no I, I i do think um umberto's um 14 uh, points or 14 characteristics of ur fascism are a really good analysis of fascistic tendencies in the same way that psychological analysis of like uh of like anti-social uh, social personality traits that like you can have these elements and not necessarily be it yet or you could be it and not have all of these elements like, just lost it. hey beast yeah well, I mean you know yeah I'm doing Never free base Sterner. Yeah, that's probably the way to, to put it <laughs> for Tuz. Uh A lazy limerick I just wrote himself. I once knew a man in Vegas with anarchy he'd educate us. He taught without spite and he made sure we were right to make sure his community was the greatest. Aw, himself. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking, I'm just taking it. I'm putting it somewhere. Um... Um, oh, thank you, Cyber. Um, I just got to the nail polish comment, uh, Cyber Heart. Um, yeah, they alternate between pink and blue. Um, this time it's pink. Want to talk against a socialist that wants to be an anarchist beast? Because I can go on voice. Uh, understanding reality just mean you have to be it. Um, I'm about to read the anti Oedipus. Wishing me luck. Hey, lettuce. Good luck. Um, I like to think of it as 14 fascist smells. 
interesting then. That's not, that is actually an interesting way of looking at it. <clears throat> You're reading, reading it in French. Good luck, man. Good fucking luck. Uh, yeah, that's why I need the luck. Yeah, no, fucking yeah, good, good, good fucking luck with that one. Um, we got a few French speakers in the community. We got a few French people in the community. Um, there's two in here right now um, that are like straight up French. So if you need help with something, I mean, I suppose, you know, ask. Um, I kind of want to, I kind of want to just risk, I just kind of want to try it. Eh, fuck him. Um, yeah, for peace volunteering there. Uh, confirmed if you struggle with translation hit me up said for twos. um I've said Chinese is my favorite written language and German Japanese are my favorite auditory language French is my least favorite I hate um I'm Dutch fluent French um there you go let us um no if you need if you need somebody uh the offers out there otherwise you're good um, no, we've, I've done, we've done the language thing before. I, I actually am a proponent of English. I, for all of its fucking brokenness, the fact that it's like three or four languages in a trench coat pretending to be one language and all of its foibles and failings um i think it's i think it's the right one i think it's the i think there's a reason beyond just the british empire stabbing and fucking it into half the globe um the dynamism the ability to steal from other languages the fact that it was essentially just a commerce language that allowed for fucking ports and mariners to fucking you know um uh, mariners to discuss trade at ports readily um, has created some sort of amalgamation of language that is, I mean, it has a certain je ne sais quoi, right? Je ne sais quoi, schadenfreude. These are just as English as they are in their origin languages. There are phrases now, right? Like that's, that's evoi fucking we we you know we we will st english will just yank it if we don't have it we're like yeah we we're missing that take it um i i yeah i think there's something to it the 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 the, the fact that we have no true prescriptive nature of uh, of english that it is fundamentally and functionally a descriptivist language at its heart. And that only when you enter technical spaces does it become prescriptivist. I, I think that that sort of creates something. <clears throat> yeah, I don't believe in that, Silver. Um, <laughs> redacted um and bread tube and circuses uh panamets or census um I, I i much prefer saying it in latin um than the the bread and circuses i don't like the the mouth feel um i'm for those of you who don't know me and i come from a theatrical background like i'm i'm an it geek from way back but i did a ton of fucking drama and theater and repertory company and all those sorts of things um and mock trial, speech and debate, these sorts of things. Mouthfeel for words matters to me. And bread and circuses doesn't, it's not, it doesn't feel good. But panamets or census, that, that's silky smooth. <clears throat> you just thought the name was a fun pun? And 
What is a name anyway? Um. <laughs> True, we take everything. Say love you. Um. But we can because it's English. And that's what we can do to it. See, that's the beauty of this, the, 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 my mother tongue. Yeah. We can, we can fix your language. It's a gorgeous thing we can do. Ah, uh, Versa. <laughs> oh, fucking Modi. Yeah, again, English isn't prescriptive. Um, let us. Your mom works at the BJ. Your grandma works at the BJP. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, Shakespeare taught me well. Fuck it. I'm making one up. What's that mean? Yeah, who knows? Um, uh, you know. <laughs> Just make it up as I go. Who cares? Um, and in fucking a few hundred years, it'll be high art. Yep, in 200 years, the language will be something none of us understand, but it'll be called English. It, it's, it's a gorgeous thing that fucking weirdly manifested. I honestly, yeah, I adore it. Um, perks of being born in a racist Hindu traditional family. <laughs> Versa. I used to, when I was over on Podbean back in the day doing podcasting and I did Collins, I had a heavy contingent of Indians in the overnight show. Lots of lots of Indian people would call in to practice their English and just to talk to somebody and see like, oh my God, an American who understands that, you know, the Hindu nationalists have taken over and, the, you know, can discuss at least at base level Indian politics. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, that's that's that is hilarious that you've got the, the <laughs> Hindu trad shit. Um, may I ask Versa, are you male or female? Or do you not identify as either of those? Um, but yes, given, given what I know about fucking Hindu traditionalist families, um, no, shit is wild for two. Modi is fucking crazy as shit, man. That, that's, that stuff gets fucking wacky as fuck. That, that, yeah. Hindu nationalism that Modi brought in. <sighs> Okay, Versa. Fair enough. You don't identify as either of them, but I've identified as male because I'm closeted. Well, at least you've got the 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 um the male privilege working on your part for the moment. Um, you know, you can It's there, right? It's there. Um, but I get you. You know, I'm mildly gender fluid. <laughs> skirts, painted fingernails, you know, and how do I say this without putting a, <laughs> Kai's about to get crude. You should see me in the bedroom. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I get you. Um, but yeah, at least you can fall back on that a little bit. Male cast and class privilege. The only thing is just colorism. Is, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Versa. So are you like, because I know this, the skin bleaching is a real thing. Like, it's a real fucking thing. I've, I've looked into it, seen multiple documentaries on it. Dude, the skin bleaching is a thing in your part of the world. Also in Southeast Asia. Um, yeah, that's that's a thing. Um, someone trying to become a political Twitch streamer. How long did you're just talking to yourself, uh, talking to myself phase laugh, trying not to uh, get down. Um, it never existed. Uh, bread tube. Um, I hate to like, I can't help you in this regard because I came to Twitch with a community. 
All right, like the less this week's been slow, um, but generally, yeah, my numbers are generally like between fifty and a hundred. Like that's that's just, I have a community. I came to Twitch with a community. People came with me, um, so I was never talking to myself. Um, um, but there was a time I was, um, but I was a podcaster then. Um, this the visual medium wasn't an element of it. Um, so it was easier and simpler in that regard. Um, uh, there is at Proudly Radical, but I don't run it. Um, one of my mods handles that. And But um, at Kai's Things, I don't do Twitter, though. At, at Kai's Things, K-A-I-S, uh, things. Um, all of my stuff is Kai's Things. K-A-I-S, things.com will get you my website. Um, hi, my name's Kai. Um, if you haven't quite put that together yet. Um but um, there was a time where I was just a dude screaming into the void, not knowing what I was doing, BreadTube. But I'm okay with that. Um, what I was doing then is different than what I'm doing now. This format wouldn't work then. And I, I acknowledge that. I grew into this role, or this role. I grew into doing anarchist education and political engagement. Um, so, <laughs> exactly, Amorous. Um, the one piece of advice I can give you, uh, Brett, too, the, the one piece that I can, well, I can give you two. <clears throat> okay, fine, three. Three. One, your audio quality matters. Your video quality doesn't matter. People can suffer through that unless you're doing heavy visual engagement um audio quality matters two you're gonna suck you're gonna suck everybody sucks nobody starts as a master just accept that you're gonna suck you're gonna embarrass yourself you're gonna suck it's gonna be awkward at times and that's just part of it three it's the same rule every good com every great comedian follows. Don't lie. Be yourself. Be honest. You have to bear part of your soul. Every performer, every great performer, bears part of their soul. It's, you have to. You have to. That's part of the gig. You have to give of yourself. And if you try not to do that, if you try and put up too many walls, you will come across as phony. You'll come across as just inaccessible. So there's my three pieces of advice for you, Brad Doom. Audio. Fucking, you're gonna suck. Be honest. Ah. Uh. Beyond that, depends what you're trying to do. Oh, cyber. Well, mm, mm. and smash charts with an iron fist. Yeah, honestly, just handle them. Um, always a good, always a good route. Uh, is there among anarchist writers one that you would consider overrated? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get into a lot of fucking hot water here. Chapa. I'm going to get into a lot of hot water. Kropokin, Bakunin, and Proudhon. The foundational writers. Do you want me to justify my argument on this one? Most of what they wrote doesn't relate to today. It's contextually out of place. Yeah, hot take. This is an anarchist hot take. It's contextually out of place. They don't speak to the modern incarnation of anarchism. You need to understand that stuff. You need to understand that stuff. But 
they don't speak to now. They're out of time. They're out of place. I mean, Marx is more utopian than Proudhon. Fucking Marx thought he could fuck it. Look at what Marx thought he could establish. Marx thought he could harness the evil to do good. And it killed millions. Marx was the utopian if I ever had to make that argument. Yeah, like he, he legitimately would be classified as a philosophical utopian. Um, and besides, it wasn't Marx versus Proudhon. It was Marx versus Bakunin. They actually knew each other. They actually argued like fucking schoolgirls. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's not it, the comparison isn't Marx and Proudhon or Marx and Kropotkin. It's it's Marx and Bakunin. These are the two that fought. Um. Yeah. Um. You want fiction? Um. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's my favorite book series of all time. Um. Douglas Adams is a goddamn comedic and science fiction genius, and I miss every day that he's not on this planet. I miss him every day that he's not he's not walking around. Um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, there's my towel right up there. Um, then um, Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson. If you've, if you've read that and you want another recommendation, Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson. Um, cyberpunk is my jam. Um, anytime I run a game, Cyberpunk. Um, I'm, I'm a fate GM. Um, and yeah, that's... I will unabashedly steal from Neil. Um, and if Neil is your style, then go ahead and read Cryptonomicon. Um, after that. Um, and if you're ambitious, Scott, good luck. Um, if you're ambitious, I will give you one recommendation that I don't think you'll finish. Most people don't. Um, it is silver hero protagonist. It's best fucking name ever given to a fucking main character. I swear to God. Best, best name ever. Hero protagonist. Ah. Um. Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. That's the best fucking name. He, he did it intentionally. Come on, it's amazing. Um. Yeah, um. Yeah, Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. Literally one of the greatest authors of the English language, and he was a contemporary. Like, I lived at the same time that man lived. It still staggers me every time I think about that. I lived at the same time as David Foster Wallace. He is one of the greatest authors of the English language. Like, unabashedly. Um... No, no, I haven't, Gemma. Um, it's a tabletop RPG. Fucking, I, I, yeah, no, I've got my system. Um, yeah, Snow Crash is badass. Snow Crash is badass. It just is. Um, yeah, I've got my, I've got my system, Gemma. Uh, so yeah, there, there's, there's some book recommendations. Uh, um. Let's see. <clears throat> you me. Burping. Burping. Alright. Um.
It means chaos. Burger man. It means chaos. It's it's literally the opposite. It's it's about a formalized organizational modality. It just it takes form of higher uh, of uh, hierarchical versus hierarchical. So yeah, most people think it just means chaos. That's the biggest misconception. Um, second after that, violence. There's anarcho pacifists. There's anarcho insurrectionists. So just take your fucking flavor. Um, but yeah, it's not inherently violent. Um. Oh, um, cyber hat, uh, cyber heart. Sorry. sorry. Um, basically, it, uh, Marx thought he could control and contain the um, the centralizing authoritarian vanguardistic tendencies of humanity. Now, um, yeah, Burger Man, basically. Um, think direct democracy or consensus decision making. If you're not familiar with consensus decision making, uh, cs.kaisthings.com, cs.kaisthings.com. Go to the anarchism section. There'll be a tab for consensus decision making, and it'll explain it to you. Um, there's also a YouTube video link to it. So, if you're more of a visual learner, um, so Cyberheart to break that down. Basically, Marx thought he could take. Um, the 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 impulsive the impulse to control the impulse to dominate the impulse to centralize power the impulse to hide away power behind the learned men of academia and those sorts of things and use that to foment and create a, a revolution that would restructure society in a way that would equalize for the workers for the proletariat for the masses, for the non-learned men of academia, for the non-oligarchical crew, right? He basically thought that he could use fire to tame fire. And while theoretically in physics you could use an explosion to suck the oxygen out of the room to tame fire, in this instance, it's a goofy idea. <clears throat> it, it, it's, it, it was a stupid idea and it's been proven out how it, it plays out every time. It, we know how it plays out. We've seen it. Small scale, big scale. Micro and macro. We've seen both iterations of this now. It ends up with millions and millions of people dead. That's how it works. Um, you're welcome, Cyberheart. Oh. Bucky balls. Oh, Buckminster Fuller. I, I just think of those people that got to actually sit there and listen to a Buckminster Fuller lecture from him. Like literally just got to sit in that room with Dr. Fuller. And it, it, it's, it's the sort of thing that gets me a little, little weepy even just thinking about like you getting to witness that kind of thing. Oh, fucking, for those of you who don't know who Buckminster Fuller is, um, look him up. You've got a lot of research to do, but um, <laughs> he, uh, in certain so circles, he is um, renowned. Um, yeah, he fucking architect, designer, futurist. Um, yeah. If you, yeah, Bucky Balls. If you've ever heard the term um, fucking Spaceship Earth, him. Um, synerge uh, synergetics, him. Tensegrity, him. Those super, the Tensegrity fucking tables. Buckminster Fuller. Um, yeah, he his architectural designs and um, like engineering creations have given form to some of the um, <clears throat> strongest engineered structures that we we know um yeah he he was a hell of a thing and he just he was a visionary like this is a dude that could look at the world and say i can see beyond it and then create the stuff that he saw beyond it the guy was brilliant <clears throat> Marxist revolution is and oh he one of his 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 one of the tenets of uh 
of his creations was if you like if you strive for beauty you're doing it wrong right like if if you truly engineer the best applicable situation like if you truly design it and engineer it to be the strongest most coherent with nature it will automatically be beautiful and if you look at a geodesic dome it's a perfect example it's engineered for strength and integrity but it's gorgeous it's pleasing to the eye he understood that kind of stuff <laughs> Oh, damn. Nice, Karina. Um, Marxist revolution is like the old ad adage, uh, old saying, never argue with a fool. They'll drag you down to their level and then beat you with experience. <clears throat> uh, Cyberheart, it's called anarchism. <laughs> We've thought of it. It's been around for fucking ages and ages. We know how to use it. Um, yes, Epcot. Um, the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. Um, I think I have. Let me look it up, actually. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure I've seen this, though, Rev. Yes, I have. I have seen this. Yeah, whose car is this? The Zinger or fucking whatever it is? Uh, tw uh yeah, the t Zinger 21C. Fucking yeah, I have seen this. I saw the video on this, Rev. I wouldn't even do a good intro to Buckminster. Um. Thinking out loud. Thinking out loud, um, it was um, thinking out loud was a, a documentary that was done about Buckminster Fuller uh, twenty five years ago, something like that. Burger Man, yeah. Search search YouTube for like uh, search YouTube for like Buckminster Fuller thinking out loud. Somebody's had to have uploaded it by now. Um. How does he compare to Frank Lloyd Wright? Oh, better in my opinion, himself. Better in my opinion. friends boyfriends was when he was here asked his anarchy just chaos and his girlfriend rolled her eyes i said heterarchy and she broke it down simply for him fuck all so, uh, get smacked with info kind of stuff nice um no i haven't um look and have you read the uh, hyperion contest no i haven't chapa uh i don't have much time for fucking fiction anymore truthfully um i've been wanting to get around to um oh god uh, forgive me. Uh, the culture series. Um, fucking Ian e. Banks. Um. And so, like, yeah, I've been wanting to get around to the culture series for a while. Um, it comes highly recommended to me. And I've got the audiobooks. I just, you know, there's so much time in a day. There's only so much time in a day. Yeah, definitely EDM. Tempted to redeem a reading and make you read a review of it, but I figure you can manage your own time. <laughs> I can't. Death Stalker audiobooks. Um, himself, he wasn't into the geodesic dome. He created the geodesic dome. 
it, it's not that he was into it. <laughs> it's his. Um, um, what genres of EDM do I like most? Um, side chill. Um, oh, you know what? Hang on. Look, I can, I can just get a little freak love. Um, chill step, side chill, fucking, um, atmospheric breaks a little bit, old school fucking trance. Um, yeah, something in that territory. Um, I'm really a sucker for, um, like real instruments. Um, I can't play it on stream, but, um, go listen to somebody like Sizzlebird. Um, shout, shout out Ott. Um, like I kind of know the dude. Um, look him up. Uh, S i z z l e b i r d. He's a um, classically trained violinist who does his own musical tracking and EDM stuff behind the, the you know, the violin. Um, and so I'm, I'm a sucker for that sort of thing. Like if if whoever's making the EDM actually plays instruments as well, that always gets me. Cyberheart. Um. Thank you. You have a good one. Sleep well. Um, and yeah, we do bad movie nights on Friday, like today, like later today. So for any of you newbies, like on the Discord server, we do bad movie Fridays. And this week is the final fucking Breen movie. Oh, it's always, it's always a fucking moment when we hit the fifth Breen movie. It is technically tomorrow. Yes, I agree. Um, no, Versa, I don't give two shits about it. The man, the myth, the legend, Neil Breen himself. Um, no, I did not watch the, uh, the Matrix 4 trailer. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Um, I didn't give a shit about the second one. I didn't give a shit about the third one. I don't give a shit about the fourth one. Um, I, I, I tapped at the first one. Uh, the first one was really good, um, and it was it did what I needed it to do. Um, but you know, yeah, beyond that, now I'm good. Uh, have you seen the Green Room? That's uh, that's horror, right, Chapo? I don't do horror. I I I just don't enjoy horror. Um, I'm gonna watch anything Keanu. I can understand that impulse. I understand that impulse, but I'm not that much of a Keanu fan that I'd be like, I have to now. I I enjoyed the first one. The first one was great. Um, I, I truly enjoyed the first uh, Matrix, but beyond that, no, I'm good. I I don't need to know more about Cyber Jesus. It's it's just Cyber Jesus. I, I I've I've studied the monomyth enough. I've written the monomyth. I've you know acted the monomyth. Um, I know Joseph Campbell's work. Right? Like I don't, I know how this story works and taking it into the fourth iteration, they already completed the monomyth. They completed the hero's journey. Um, I, I don't, I don't need the fourth iteration. I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't even need the second and the third one. I didn't watch them. I, I, I know how that story ends. I could have told you the fucking, I could have told you at the end of the first one, how it ends. Like, if you told me there was going to be a trilogy at the end of the first one, I'd be like, oh, okay, this ends with him sacrificing himself like Jesus. It's the way that story always ends. They're just going to carry the tale even for uh, further forward into the resurrection. And that's, dude, this is this is Joseph Campbell's monomyth. It's all it is. Um, it's just, you know, cyberpunk Jesus. Which, again, enjoy. 
enjoy. Don't let me yuck your yum. If that's if you fucking dig the graphics and you dig Keanu and you want some fucking badass fucking choreography, I just I don't have room for that. I don't need it. I don't need it. So um I mean they're just telling the same story again, right? Like that's the pun of the names. Like, basically, yeah. I tuned into my first bad movie. The idea sounded pretty groovy. It was Neil Brain. I wasn't sure what I'd seen and got drunk to get in the mood. Another limerick for y'all. In the moody, sorry. Um Yeah, of course it is, Versa. Of course it is. It's called of course it's called Resurrections. It's it's Jesus. It's the t it's the story of Cyber Jesus. I know the Wachowski sisters have said that have gone on record and said that it's about like it, you know being trans and stuff. And I'm sure for them it is, but it's not. I'm sorry, it's not. It's it's the story of Cyber Jesus. If you try and debate that, that's fucking goofy. But I'm I'm sure for them they have deeper philosophical meaning for it for themselves that they project into as the creators and the people who have lived it and you know produced it, written it, and directed it. I'm sure. What they wrote the story of cyber jesus <laughs> like um that's that's just you know it's it's joseph campbell's monomyth it's the hero's journey it's the same story human beings have been telling since the beginning of time it's it's a format any writer understands inherently when they look at it like there's there's not a writer on this planet who hasn't written a lick of fiction that can't look at the matrix series and go yeah that's the monomyth it, it's just it's a it's a template it's a format it's a format that works for the human experience and it's it's been that way forever you can over you can lay over anything on top of it and it works oh um Raphael, did you not know that the the Wachowski brothers transitioned? They're 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 the Wachowski sisters now. Yes, it's 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 sisters. Um, the two the yeah the two the two Wachowski siblings um, transitioned a number of years back now. Um, and yeah, one of them rocks an insane hairdo. Fucking those pink dreads. I don't I don't know which of them was rocking those pink dreads all the time, but holy shit, that's some fucking hair. Um, Really? <sighs> hey, Firefox. No. Um, is that really what comes up first? Oh, if you type, hold on, let me, let me check this. Okay. It's kind of. Uh, so it's Lily. I think it's Lily. Yeah, Lily's the one with the hair. Yeah, Lily's the one rocking the hair. Yeah, Lily's, Lily's hair is a thing. She does. Yeah, I actually agree with that. Um, fucking Lily does seem to be the happier of the two siblings uh, on a regular basis. Um, that seems to be, she always seems to be bouncing around and super like perky. My oh, God, I don't know what other way to put it. Like she, she seems truly contented. I mean, no offense, but if I had their cash too, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, right? Like it's, just, it's not vivacious. Yeah, sure. It's not a terrible life that they're living. 
<laughs> They're living a pretty decent, pretty decent. She's she's got a good gig going. She's got a really good gig going. Like it's I. I mean, look, clinical depression is a bitch, and if you have it, that's a whole other thing. But she seems to like, yeah, like, dude. If you're not clinically depressed, it's kind of difficult to be miserable if you were in her position. Like, that's, dude, that's a good fucking gig she's got going. <laughs> I'm fucking bouncing around, too. Um, yeah, she always... She, um, yep, money doesn't buy happiness, but it damn sure gives you the elbow room to find it. Yeah, it buys you options, and options buy you breathing room, and breathing room reduces stress, and lack of stress alone can get you there. Um, I mean, I'm sure they're billionaires, right? Like, they have to be billionaires. The the amount of money, like, they, they, they've got to be in the billions. Oh, okay. No. They're looking at about a buck twenty-five each. Yeah, about a buck twenty-five each. That's not bad, but less than I expected. Uh, is it fucked up to say that Lana before transition looked like Kingpin? No, 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 no. Um, they they legitimately did. Um. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're, they're they're hit makers at this point, Silver. They're hit makers. They just snap their fingers and they get a project. Yeah. I mean, the amount of money they spent on fucking um, Sense Eight alone was ridiculous. I I you look at the fucking travel alone like the budget for travel on sensei it was, it was insane it was insane they're like yeah and this scene takes place in belgium and now this scene takes place in france and now in this scene we're in korea and in this scene we're like it's just like holy shit what does your filming schedule look like calm down lady <laughs> like are you guys just renting out like 747s and like c-130s and shit and just like constantly Dude, the, yeah, Sense8 was a bitch to film. No wonder, it is no wonder Netflix canceled that show. <laughs> I'm sure they were looking at that fucking budget going, how much have we spent on this shit so far? Um, as far as I know, it was, uh, it was original. Like, they wrote it, Silver. Um, that and fucking what's his name? Um, nine Joe Straczynski. Thank you, Gemma. Nine million dollars per episode. Nine million dollars per episode to film Sunset. Straight up. Yeah. The first season cost $120 million to make. And they didn't even... There's 12 episodes? Something like that? Ten million, epi 10 million episode for the first season. more than hiring the Seinfeld cast. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, fucking Netflix took one look at that. They're like, mm. and it wasn't pulling it in. It wasn't pulling the ratings they needed it to pull. So it had to go. I mean, that, that final episode, they rented the fucking Eiffel Tower. 
They're like, yeah, we, we need the Eiffel Tower. So can we rent it? Yeah, like it honestly. I think it took a long time to be good. The premise was brilliant. It was well executed, but they were really slow. They took too long to get to the point. They, they really, they needed, a, so they needed somebody to put a fire under their asses, and that's what their cancellation did. I think that final episode is the best example of what that show could have been. If somebody had fucking put the fire under their asses, but instead they're the Wachowski sisters, right? You can't fucking pressure them. You can't pressure them. You can't. They're going to do what they want to do. You can't fucking lean on them that way. Um, but if somebody put the fucking fire under their asses from season one, that final episode, episode 12 of season two, which is two and a half hours long, it's a fucking movie, is, a, is the perfect example of what that show had all of the potential to be and it is a great episode it's a great fucking finish um yeah i i truly cory thanks for the follow um yeah i i i i was satisfied um yeah it was it, it that was the example it was, it was like yeah that's what that show could have been from season one it could have been that but they took so fucking long to do their character development that it just dragged on and on and on. It's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, but when they had that cancellation, favorite show ever, Gravity Falls. I don't, I mean, Gravity Falls is great. Don't get me wrong. It's fucking well-written, beautifully animated, well-structured. Um, yeah, don't get me wrong. Gravity Falls is a fucking great show. It's great. It's an example of a great show. Um, took for fuck ever to come out though, didn't it? <clears throat> the scheduling on that one was a nightmare. I think it was more Joe's writing than Lana or Lily's. The action sequences are classic Lana Lily. I, I, look, I don't know who's responsible for what in that show, Gemma. Uh, I wasn't in the writer's room. Um, but Jesus. And to this day. I have nothing but sympathy for the editors. That show had to be a nightmare to edit. Those action sequences are insane. They're insane. Eight people hopping around bodies and shit. So what, like, you know, a fucking, a punch gets thrown and you're one person and then like, camera trend a uh, camera uh positional change and then it's somebody else now fighting like those scenes were a nightmare to edit they were they had to be a bitch to shoot but they were a nightmare to edit like i i can only imagine what that had to look like as a fucking layout for an editor oh mad props because it's well edited. It's done it, it exceptionally well. It's done exceptionally well. But I mean, man, I, I can only imagine the fucking migraines that some of those editors went home with at night. I didn't watch Steven Universe. Oh, yeah, Gemma. Oh, yeah, it had to be. It was a huge fucking challenge. It's a huge challenge for an editor. Dude, that was... It was staggering, some of those scenes. How how fluidly they were put together, despite how many different takes and shots that comprised, like, five seconds of action. It's ridiculous. Nothing but respect for him. Uh, it was impressive. Um, yeah, I never watched Steven Universe. One other thing I watched. I don't know that one other, Chapa. But um, I 
the whole thing was a technical nightmare, Gemma. The whole thing was a technical nightmare. I, honestly. Like, I, what do the dailies look for? Like, look like for something like that? Jesus Christ. Um. Keep playing. Eh, fuck it. Um. Clicked the wrong thing. I clicked the wrong thing, everybody. Fail. Ugh. We're gonna raid out. I need to shut the fuck up and I need to get some food. Um. Steven Universe. Oh, okay. About the Steven Universe thing. All right. Cool. Public. I was gonna raid into you. Actually, I was gonna hang for a moment. I guess it's just a moment. Um. Yeah. I was. I was gonna raid into you, but I'm gonna raid over to Tony. Uh, I need to shut the fuck up. Um. Yep. Tomorrow's bad movie night for those of us. Uh, for those of you that join us for bad movie night. Um. Later, Kaz. Later, everybody. If you're new, fucking five days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 5.30 p.m. Pacific, Tuesday, Thursdays, 11.30 p.m. Pacific. You just call it Thursday's 11.30 p.m. show. Um, either way, take care of yourselves. Catch you another time. Hope you're well as you can be.